Check, 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 check. Hello, Heather. Good morning, let's do this. It is the Cotter and Marshall Show. You know the drill. Get on that stream, man. Watch the show. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Hangouts, comment. Be one of the horde. Like, follow, and subscribe while you're there. You can always listen to the show. Download the app for free. Get us in your in-home smart speaker. And check us out at rock1061.com. Marshall, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Uh, big day yesterday, Cotter. I don't know if you heard about it. But the movement finally works. Hashtag free Britney. She is free. She is no longer under her father's thumb. Congratulations to Britney Spears. Now, isn't she getting a different conservator? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But hey, not, details, it, details, details, details. Got it. Jamie, that monster of a father is out of her life. Is she really free? Yeah. If she has somebody else watching the money, though? Yeah, probably. I mean, I get it. She's had some struggles. Is she going to, I don't know. Is, is she really free? As long as there's somebody there needing to sign the checks, holding the purse strings, is, is Brittany really Here's what I know. I read a headline, Cotter, and that's where it stopped. And that's where it stopped, and I'm happy. So you know what? Just like uh, most Americans, I'm just going to stop caring at that point. Now, so, 
So congratulations to Britney Spears. No, I mean, it, it is good that her dad's out because, I mean, he was doing weird things. He bugged her bedroom. Mm -hmm. He was able to track her phone and other devices to see what she's up to. I mean, to me, you are going a bit far when these things are in place. Yeah. And I mean, I know you don't have kids. The last thing I would want to do is to bug my adult daughter's bedroom. Things you don't need to hear, man. <laughs> things you don't need to experience. Things that, you know, will never go away and just will be burned into your mind. Yeah. So you've, you've experienced some of these things? No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. I would never right. do it. Oh, uh, okay. Because there All are right. things you don't want to hear. All right. Okay. I mean, creepy. It's just creepy. <laughs> All right, coming up on the show today, guys, we're going to be joined by the big guys, going to break down some more NFL as we head into another big weekend. I'm getting quizzed in the face. I think this is the most excited I've ever been for Hefe, the new music beta fish. Two of my all-time favorite bands are up for choices today, Volbeat and Ghost. Oh, that's a good one. This one, I mean, they're touring together next year. Yeah. This is tough. Okay. I, I hope Hefe takes takes today seriously. <laughs> I'm sure he will, as he always does. We've got the Mount Rushmore of high school movies. We're going to have some trivia today. Call, comment, and text. This one near and dear, uh, near, dear to our hearts, Marshall. What is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened, and did you regret it? When it comes to our question of the day, uh, I don't really feel like an expert, except for this one exact right? occasion. I feel like this is something I actually know quite a bit about. We can talk about this one and not sound like a-holes. Okay, probably. <laughs> but intelligent a-holes. Uh, about last night, we'll kick off the show next. Uh, a work of art that is kind of questionable. We've got a beer festival that uh, eventually made its way to a cemetery, and there's a new book coming out about the New England Patriots, and this one could be interesting. That's next. Cotter and Marshall Show. Here's Aaron Jones and Supercharged. Rock 1 to 6 1. Good old Jamie Spears. James, James. He's a, he's a grown-ass man who went by Jamie on purpose. His name was James. We, he's we, like, I'll go by Jamie. We know somebody who goes by Jamie. Who? Markley. I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Fair. Uh, so Tom Brady, uh, most likely going to pass Drew Brees' passing yards record on Sunday. And he's doing it in Foxborough, which I kind of find funny. Yeah, him and Drew Brees have had this funny thing going back and forth where they just, uh, sorry, I'm feeding Hefe. You're the, good. The beta fish. It's probably angry. I usually feed him about a half an hour ago, but I was busy doing some stuff. So him and Tom Brees, uh, him and uh, Drew Brees yeah. were uh, going back and forth on like the most touchdowns and the most passing yards. And now that Drew Brees is finally retired, Tom Brady will officially have him forever. But uh, it's cool that he's doing it up in uh, Foxborough. That game against the Patriots is going to be, I, I just think the Buccaneers are going to wipe the floor with him. Yeah. I think it's going to be ugly. Uh, it'd be funny if after, you know, because he just needs 68 yards, I believe. So say 69 yards. Nice. And then he's just like, I'm retiring now. I was literally <laughs> here just to beat this record. Just I'm for, out. Just for the record here. Peace. Yeah. All right, nice and early. We're uh, going back on the air here in just over a minute. Yesterday's show ended very <laughs> abruptly on, on an interesting note. So we lost power to the building, and it, at first we were still on the air. Then things got weird, and we were no longer on the air. Right. And uh, we got a call from somebody who said, I don't know what's going on, but there's like a robotic voice on the station just reading numbers. So instantly I'm like, ooh, lost. This is cool. <laughs> um, come to find out, we use a device called a barracks box. And for whatever reason, uh, it sends its IP uh, address. <laughs> oh, so we were giving everyone our IP we address. That's exactly what we were doing. So that's good. Um, but uh, I believe we're all fixed now. I hope. So there was a like a fire yesterday around here. Did you? I mean, Stacy said something about it, but I didn't hear anything. You walked out and it was like, smoky outside when i left the building yesterday like yeah. uh, around 11 30 or so i mean it was like genuinely like a slight haze when i walked out the door i felt like i was living in california suddenly uh all right guys we'll be right back
We had Deflate Gate. We had Spy Gate. Are we now getting Book Gates with the New England Patriots? Talk about that next. Story number one about last night, ESPN writer Seth Wickersham getting ready to release a book, diving into the vanity secrets and unraveling <laughs> of the New England Patriots. Uh, good old New England. I mean, we knew they were insane, right? We yeah. just knew the, the whole organization's like one big hush-hush secret. Like, we just recently learned that Tom Brady's actually kind of cool and has a personality. Right. And that was because he had to leave New England to show it off because apparently you're not allowed to show anything if you're a member of their football team. It's the Bill Belichick way of life. Uh, the book is called It's Better to Be Feared. It's set to come out October 12th. Now, in a recent ESPN piece promoting the book, a source outed Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots, uh, trashing his three-time NFL coach of the year. Now, he classified him as an idiot savant. Wait, is that not good? I I don't. I, it's kind of one of those backhanded compliments. Oh, okay, yeah. People, like, say the same thing to me, but that second word I don't recognize. They just <laughs> stop there. That's weird. Uh, he said that before uh, he was set to leave Cleveland when he was becoming an assistant in New England in 1995. Now, this is also a quote from Kraft. He was getting ready to leave a conference in Colorado. This is after Belichick became head coach. Okay. He said, I hate leaving here. You leave here, and you leave some of the most brilliant people you've ever met. You pick up so much knowledge from all these brilliant minds. I have to go to Detroit to be with the biggest effing a-hole in my life, my head coach. <laughs> I mean, he hired him. Technically, I know. that's his fault. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, this whole thing is just crazy. So once again, this is a uh, new book that's being put out by an ESPN uh, guy. I mean, essentially, he's been like putting out hit pieces on yeah. the uh, on the Patriots for like every other year for the past like I don't know ten years at this point. It feels like uh, the book's coming out October twelfth. It's called Better to Be Feared. Now, I mean, Bill Belichick is still going to be no matter what this book even tries to do to him. He's still going to be. Recognized as one of the best head coaches of all time. But the story with Eric Mangini is yes. pretty great, Cotter. This one's good. So uh, they were at, uh, it was uh, back in like 2008. It was about a year after uh, Mangini kind of snitched on him. Mm -hmm. Let everybody know about uh, Spygate. Well, they actually uh, got into a fist fight and had to be separated. It was a dinner for head coaches. Mangini's wife, uh, uh, Julie, bumped into Belichick, said hi. Belichick just blew her off. Nothing to do with her. Mangini got all kinds of ticked off, started swinging at Belichick. Hey, Bill, F you. Other coaches <laughs> had to pull him back off of Bill Belichick. Yeah, and in 2017, uh, Eric Mangini, which I don't even think is in the league at this point. I think he's been booted <laughs> long ago. Uh, he, in 2017, he said he actually has still has not spoken to Bill Belichick since that incident. Uh, he mentioned that in 2017. Uh, man, Bill Belichick... Wow. He, he's a guy. I, I'm uh, kind of interested in reading this book, but apparently I do have quite a few books that I have still promised <laughs> to read uh, that I still need to read before this one. But uh, this is pretty cool stuff. A new book coming out about the Patriots. I'm guessing bestseller outside of New England banned within the New England states. <laughs> oh, Nobody gets to buy it. At least in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up next, a beer fest. Got a little out of hand when uh, it overflowed into a centuries-old cemetery. That story is next. Cotter and Marshall Show, Rock 1 is 6 1. So, going back to the station exploding yesterday, once again, for anyone joining us here on the live chat, live stream this morning, into the show yesterday, we had two breaks left. We were just doing yeah. Marshall's Music News, we lost power. Power came back on with 15 seconds. I don't think our stream, our stream was never affected yeah. because our room is like generator backups. Yeah. So we never lost power. But the station over the air went out. Yeah. Started giving out our IP address. Which hopefully it's changed at this point. Doesn't sound like a good thing. Especially if someone wrote down the numbers. Um, and the power came back on. There was some sort of fire outside. Right. It was thick. I kept hearing sirens all day, but I don't know where the fire was. Right. I kind of thought we were going to die. Yeah, it was it was really weird. I mean, you know, you lose power, that happens. I mean, we like like you said, Marshall, we do have uh, everything kind of backed up. So I thought initially we were fine, uh, but yeah, the the guy the the thing reading numbers over there, it's never I've never heard of that. That mm -hmm. that is a first for me. Yeah, and it's funny because somebody that I'm friends with on Facebook, 
uh, commented about it. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know what's going on, guys. Then a bunch of people are commenting as like, you know, aliens and all this kind of uh, crazy yeah. stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was really, really weird. It, it kind of messed up. We have like a bunch of switchers in the back that control uh, what stations on the air, when, and all that good stuff. And I, I guess the power surge or when it went out just kind of tripped that. Mm. And that's when things got really weird. <laughs> I mean, I was hearing somebody else from a different station on, on rock. Okay. Yeah. Cool. This crazy stuff. <laughs> Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Wanda, yeah, aliens took over for sure. Thanks for joining us nice and early this morning. Uh, last show of the week. Uh, I am to blame this week for uh, tomorrow. I'm uh, heading off to Chicago tomorrow for uh, a quick uh, wedding weekend. I still haven't packed, nor do I have any idea what I'm going to wear. Yeah. So I was told I was told this wedding. Uh, I was like, what do I need to wear for this wedding? I'm like, I've been talking, you know, kind of like a relaxed situation. Uh, like a suit coat type situation. Right. And she's like, oh, no. She's, <laughs> geez, you can wear a NASCAR shirt. <laughs> I was like, you should totally wear a NASCAR shirt. I was like, well, I don't own one. But, uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's that type of wedding, apparently. So okay, that's fair. I'll be wearing my nicest blouse. <laughs> and uh, that's that's what I've chosen to wear. So I like it. Figure that out. Yeah, I was like, so when I went to uh, Arkansas and flew, I put everything just in a drawstring bag, which that worked out well because overheads got full. Uh, so you, if you had a, you know, an actual carry on uh, in my situation, or it was like one of the last on the plane, you couldn't put it up in the overhead and you had to kind of check it at the gate. Uh, not a big deal, but I hate doing that anyway, but I, I just had the drawstring and it was small enough to fit gone for a week this time. I don't think I can cram a week's worth of clothes in a drawstring. So probably not. I can try. Well, I mean, I could, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I could. As long as you can, like, wash your clothes? Yeah. Yeah, I'm at my aunt's house. There's, there's laundry services. Spe- uh, speaking of, I need to check in for my flight. I just uh, put, oh, yeah? put, a, put a reminder in. <laughs> I saw so many people when I flew to Arkansas that had old school paper tickets. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Oh, yeah? Why do you do that anymore? It's like, it's on your phone. You just download the ticket. It's super simple, guys. Why are you the way you are? (laughs) So uh, coming up here later in the show, we're going to be doing the Mount Rushmore uh, of high school movies. Yeah. I like this. I'm a fan of this genre (laughs) of movies. I love it. Connor goes, I like this. He's like, I'm like, because you came up with the idea yesterday? (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. No, I'm just a fan of the genre of movies. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm old, so uh, growing up, you know, there was a lot of these type of films. Um, you know, there there have been some, you know, over the past decade or so that I think has uh, stood out as well. But for me, I think a, a lot of it still is just the classics. So my Mount Rushmore will show my age. <laughs> Just making sure I have music news set up. Yep, there we go. There's not a line between that. Uh, Wanda, I've got the mower. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, I know I initially said right after the show, I don't think that's going to work. I'm maybe like, you said, I think you're home until 2. So uh, I was thinking like a little afternoon, a little after 12, leave here 12-ish, maybe a little after, then head your way before I head home if that's cool. So yesterday we were talking about uh, R. Kelly. R. Kelly uh, has been found guilty in sex crimes uh, in a recent trial. He'll be uh, he'll be sentenced later on this year. Then he has a few more trials that he has to go through. Uh, the city of Baton Rouge, where he actually received the key to the city, has been rescinded <laughs> by the very same official who bestowed it upon him. So Kelly was given the honor back in February 2013 by Denise Marcel, who at the time was a member of the Baton Rouge, I'm sorry, you, you got to say it that way, I agree, uh, Metro uh, Council. Now, Marcel tells us after Kelly's guilty verdict, she regrets giving Kelly a key to the city in the first place and is going to rescind it. You don't want to give that guy a key to the city. Get in everyone's doors? <laughs> Bad idea. I uh, can get out of that closet finally. Um, don't you think you should have rescinded this? Several years ago. I mean, even by 2013, you knew there were, there were stories. 
I mean, even giving it to him in the first place mm-hmm. to me, kind of questionable. Well, maybe I mean they were just they were just running by the uh, you know the innocent until proven guilty. He's been proven guilty, so it's time yeah. to rescind it. Uh, so if you're wondering how the whole rescinding of the key works, uh, this is kind of how it goes. So the process doesn't include actually physically taking the $256 plaque and key back <laughs> from the singer, uh, but he's just stripped of the honor. Uh, obviously, there were allegations against Kelly when Marcel presented the key back to him in oh, 2013, yeah. but once again, innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. But she tells us she only knew uh, he had been acquitted in 2008 and didn't do her homework until to truly understand what was leveled against him. Uh, she apparently is now a member of the Louisiana House of Representatives uh, and no longer on the Baton Rouge uh, Council, so. Be awesome if uh, you know moving forward they just put like a self destruct mechanism in all the keys they hand out. So in case they have to rescind it, it just blows up. Seems like a bit of a risk, <laughs> but I like it. Uh, I think R. <laughs> Kelly was a bit of a risk. I think it's fine. <laughs> uh, morning, Tony. Morning, morning, morning. We're getting up and Adam on this Thursday once again. Uh, last show of the week. Uh, working on getting. Uh, we're going to do a special beer for breakfast next Wednesday. Cotter is taking a couple days off next week. Uh, So we're going to do a special beer for breakfast so we can get in Hodge. uh, Hodge from Southern Barrel Brewing Company over in Bluffton. He's got a great event going on. I want to make sure that uh, you guys know about it. So we'll do a special beer for breakfast that day. I like it. Probably get him in at 8 a.m. So we'll be a little uh, little early. We'll be a little loosey-goosey when Lauren Wolverton's coming in (laughs) for the uh, uh, last uh, uh, Explain the Bachelor. Uh, Tony, now that you're on, uh, I sent this pic uh, to Marshall last night. Uh, went to, I don't know, what's the Japanese place? Mizu. It's over uh, off of Dean Forest. I think uh, it was, I think you had talked about it before. It's kind of over oh, at my yeah, house. Yeah. So uh, we went there for dinner last night. And we cut through a um, little uh, area. Here, I can show it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Uh, and uh, there was an awesome Halloween decoration going into what looks to be the house, but they had the giant uh, jack-o'-lantern skeleton, and it looks awesome. Yeah, so this guy, this setup is freaking incredible. So just right there, because the, see the fat guy with the white shirt? Yeah. He's, in, he's at the spirit store, and I was looking at him just over the weekend. He's $300. That giant 12-foot skeleton is like $300. That's like a... Right, probably right there. He probably has like two thousand dollars worth of Halloween decorations. And that was just one side. He had it on both sides of the street. Like that. Huge displays. Oh, okay. So I mean that guy has sunk some money into this. Yeah. Was that just like at his house or was it I don't know, because we were, I, I all I did, I caught the skeleton going to the restaurant. I'm like, oh, gotta oh, get a okay. picture on the way back. So I don't know if it was going into another subdivision, but I I think it was just a road up to somebody's house. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, super I, cool. I know, Charles. Imagine that. More time off. All right, guys. Be right back. I wouldn't think this needs to be said, but unfortunately it does. Please don't use the gravestones as tables. Got that story next. Story number two about last night, St. Mary's Norton Beer Festival wrapped up on Sunday. This was a four-day beer fest. Yeah, but I mean, it happened on the other side of the pond, Cotter. Those people like to drink. I'm so ju- I want a four-day beer fest. You couldn't handle uh, a four-day beer fest. What? You couldn't. I was built for a four-day beer fest. You were built for maybe three hours of work a day and at least ten hours of sleep. Man, get over yourself. No, no. Work, <laughs> I agree. But when it comes to drinking beer, I'm in. Uh, now, it went down at St. Mary's Church in England. It was in collaboration with Three Brothers Brewing Company. The event raises money for St. Mary's Church, which was built in 1020. It's, that's, that was a while ago. <laughs> it's centuries old. Now, it was the first time the festival was held since the start of the pandemic. 40 different beers, 12 varieties of ciders, artisan spirits. Uh, then, a, uh, then a statement from uh, Reverend Martin Anderson said, Over the last few days, our doors were open once again to members of our local community, young and old, who come to enjoy our beer festival, support local business, spend time with friends old and new. Unfortunately, photographs shared on social media have created considerable negativity, and I'm deeply sorry for that. These images showed attendees 
hanging out at the cemetery that is right by this church. Some of them circling around gravestones. Right. Using them as makeshift tables for their beer. I mean, can I just throw out something here? Like, isn't there an expiration date? Like, most likely those he- those headstones are, are forever old, right? Because this yeah. church is a thousand years old. Yeah. Like, those people, obviously long gone. Their families and descendants, probably long gone. I'm like... Where is the expiration date of being offended by someone using their gravestone as as a as a placeholder for a beer? I think that's long past. Actually, as as a, maybe a spirit in the cemetery, watching everyone have a great time, having a few drinks, I'd be like, "Yeah, man, use my gravestone. What else is it doing? Just standing there? Come on." I mean, I think it's just disrespectful in in general using the gravestone. You know, hanging out over the dead bodies. But I get your point because I'm thinking about it, going, "Man, if somebody could have a round." You know, it's like over my dead body. Yeah. Using my gravestone as, as a table. I don't hate this idea. The graveyards are fairly lonely existences. Yes. I mean, that's what I would imagine. The afterlife, if there is one, that's another discussion for another time. But, if you know, if my spirit's just kind of hanging around a graveyard or whatever, man, I mean, like, yeah, come on over. Hang out. Let's talk about stuff. Oh, that's weird. That's weird, Jim. You're into that? Oh, <laughs> gross. Like, I would have a great time. I'm giving everybody my permission. No, you know, in fact, I'm insisting Yeah. that after I pass away. I'm going to, dude, you have no idea how much I'm going to urinate on your <laughs> I grave. I was going to say, just don't pee on my grave. Stuff. Immediately I'm urinating I Use on it, it as a table, not a urine. No, I'm, de- I mean, I won't go twosies, and that's out of respect. <laughs> that's out of respect, Cotter. But, man, and I'm, I'm going to pee all over and around your grave site. You know why? Ownership. <laughs> yep. I was taught that by my dogs. Uh, just, hey, just, you're my dog, bro. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> uh, just urinate after many beers. Nah. No, oh, come on. Show me that respect. I'm just going to eat some asparagus. <laughs> oh, come on. I want everyone to know that I've been there. <laughs> all right. We got one more story to go in about last night. And it's all about a Danish artist who is, I don't know, kind of awesome. Get an a-hole at the same time. I love this guy. Oh, this is good. All right, that story's coming up after Five Finger Death Punch, Living the Dream, Rock 1 is 6 1. So, this, uh, and just a quick note we didn't hit on with the beer festival right there. Yeah. It was four days long, but they only had 40 types of beer, 12 ciders, and 10 artisan spirits, wines, and Prosecco. It's not like a wide variety. I mean, like, it was, was it the same crew coming day after day? I don't know. I agree with you. Because, I mean, you know, back when Savannah had a craft beer fest, uh, there was... I yeah, mean, like 200. Yeah, hundreds of beers. So, yeah, a four-day beer festival with only 40 beers does seem pretty weak. So I'm guessing it's a different group every day. Yeah. I mean, unless you're a real trooper. Oh. Uh, Tony, should the Horde moon salute you at your funeral, Cotter? I'm down. Do it. <laughs> My permission. Yep. And then while your trousers are down, just piss all over <laughs> <them>. <laughs> Uh oh, Charles says, uh, PSA, I'm in a mood today. Who would have thought? If you see me and my ears are blood red, just walk the other way. Good lord. Can I approach you with uh, a a Michelob Ultra? Would that be better? Would that be okay? Uh, no, Natty Light. No, Natty Light. Yeah. Okay. Michelob Ultra at night, Natty Light during the day. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, Tony says, look, when you love Halloween, money gets uh, g- money gets put away during the year to afford the addiction. Plus, you collect through the years. I did that for Christmas for a while. We uh, we went over a to- over the top few years for Christmas, uh, and I had collected things. And uh, when I moved down here, I kind of got rid of everything, so I didn't have to move it down. Ten so, different. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say. Uh, on top of that, I actually bought a Christmas tree, a new one last year after Christmas. Okay. Because, you know, everything's on sale, or whatever. Right. So uh, this year, I have a tree that's like. Three feet taller in my house. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so I've got a, I've got a, I was just thinking about that. And it's not like a pre-lit tree, so I have to go buy like 20 strings Uh-oh. of lights for this thing. We found uh, an actual cut down your own tree place two years ago. So we've yeah. gone, we've gone real tree the last two years. We'll oh, I again. can't afford that, God. That's Jesus not too bad. Christ. No, it's not too bad. And it, and it's like now with my house, because my living room's got like the. You, you know, got like huge vaulted extra, ceilings. Extra, so I can, uh, I can go big, mm-hmm. go big with the tree. Uh, Andrew says that's 10 different beers a day. Sounds fun. Ten, dude, you could, I could run through 10 different beers in like half an hour. <laughs> I, I need a large quantity of different beers to make me regret the day. All right, guys, got about a minute. Story number three. A boot last <laughs> night. Uh, as soon as we do this break, it's, I don't know, 
hell-like levels of hot in here, so I'm going to go turn the air conditioning down and grab a drink. I'm down with that. This story, I mean, there was so much to it. I I, th- I think it takes up like a page and a half on my on my doc here because I just had so yeah. many notes. Yeah, I I was like, I got to cut some of this stuff. I I cut out a lot of just the technical mumbo jumbo of his original works of art and just kind of really bared it down to to what it is. Because yeah, there was a lot of information in this, but it's kind of amazing. All right, guys, be right back. A Danish artist recently managed to pull off the biggest a-hole, yet genius move at the same time. Story's coming up. Story number three about last night. Danish artist Jens Hanning was given $84,000 by a museum. Now, this was supposed to be used in this work of art. He was asked to recreate two previous works from 2007, 2010. In these works, he used actual cash, right. actual bills, and it was to show average incomes of two different countries. He was making statements about how much money people make. Yeah, so he's a Danish guy, so he put up the annual average income of a Danish guy or a Danish person in like one painting or one kind of piece of art, and then he did the average Australian income in the other. Now, he first uh, debuted this pieces down in 2007, and he was asked to rework them and redo them now by this museum. Now, the museum is called the Kunsten Museum of Modern Art in Alborg, Denmark. And I just wanted to say that out loud just to prove that I can say big words. I am this impressed. early in the morning. I know. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go lay down. You just finish up this story, would you? <laughs> Happy to do so. Uh, however, museum staff, a bit surprised when they received... The crates of the paintings. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, cool. Can't wait to check out latest work from Jens. (laughs) Cracked open the crates. When they pulled out the the paintings, the works of art, the canvases were completely blank. Right. And he, I think essentially he put a little note in there and he's like, these pieces of art are entitled, take the money and run. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, he he said he did this because he was trying to make a statement about uh, art and yeah. the value of art. But really, this guy just hit next level a holdem that I honestly didn't think existed out there. I mean, just the balls on him. Yeah, honestly, he needs one of those wheelbarrows just to carry him. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible what he's doing. Now, according to the contract he has with the museum, the eighty four thousand was supposed to be displayed in the work, and it must be paid back. By January of 2022, now curator Loss Anderson said he actually laughed when when he saw this whole thing, and he also said, "Well, you know, we had this contract we agreed upon, and he hasn't broken it yet because we're not supposed to get the money back until 2022. So we just kind of have to wait and see. Are we getting this money back or not?" <laughs> Um, this is an interesting take. I mean, once again, a big ballsy move. I don't think he returns the money. You don't think so? I think he does. I, I, I think he does. I mean, I don't think he wants to be held and it doesn't want to go to court, doesn't want to potentially be arrested. I think he gives it back. I think he is making a statement. He's one of those snobby artist guys mm-hmm. who's like, I'm going to give you blank <laughs> canvases. They're hung in the museum. They're calling them works of art. They are blank canvases. It's kind of a genius move. And people will go see them. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is, the, this is possibly the best thing that ever happened to the Kunsten Museum of Modern Art in Alborg, Denmark, Cotter. If anybody wants to give me $84,000, I'm happy in return to give you blank canvases. Mm, really? I, I'm, I'm happy. Well, you make that an average of about three years. So <laughs> that would be a good payday for you. That'd be an excellent. All right, coming up next, Dave Chappelle. He's got a brand new stand-up special coming out. We got some details. It is the Cotter and Marshall Show, Rock 1061. All right, I'm gonna go mess with the air conditioning. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, that story to me is just amazing. Only 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 like a weird snobby artist could get away with something like that. I mean, like I said, he hasn't got away with it yet. They they have uh, tried to reach out to him uh, to work on an agreement to get the money back. They they haven't got that done yet. 
Uh, but they've got until January to figure things out. But uh, ballsy move, man. Ballsy, ballsy move. Uh, sorry, just moving some stuff around, guys. There we go. Uh, all right, so yeah, once again, going to talk Dave Chappelle. He's got a brand new special coming out. Then we'll get into our uh, call, comment, and text segment. Uh, one that we can speak on as experts. What is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened? And did you regret it? I, I will say, I'm impressed by the amount of people who commented on this and said, no regrets. Because I, I have regrets every time I eat something hot. I ain't going to lie. Well, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. So. <laughs> I think that's exactly what the uh, fine people of, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the fine people that follow us uh, have decided. Morning, Jeremy. All right. So uh, in commercials uh, coming out, we've got brand new stuff from Pretty Reckless. Then uh, we'll talk uh, Chappelle. Get into our call, comment, and text. Uh, are you smarter than community college dropout? End of the 7 o'clock hour. Like I said, super excited about Hefe's choices today around uh, 820. Do you have a new music from Ghost? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. Got, it, got it last night at midnight. Uh, it's called Hunter's Moon. Of it is going to be featured in the new Halloween movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then Volbeat Shotgun Blues, new single. They got the, their album coming out December. Uh, but yeah, Ghost, Hunter's Moon. Uh, in the new Halloween movie, so very excited about that. How is it? Did you? Uh, it's not bad. It? I mean, it's not. I I can't say it's my favorite ghost song. Yeah, I mean, it's just a song for uh, yeah, but for a it, soundtrack. It's I a get it. it's a ghost song, so I I like it. But definitely, I, you know, rats and uh, square hammer, dance macabre, all that stuff. I, I yeah, better. So uh, Cotter, I'm gonna let you. I'm just gonna say these words. I'm just gonna let you kind of go off. Okay. Disney <laughs> has revealed yes. that the Book of Boba Fett is going to come out on December 29th of this year. Wasn't it? Did they initially say early December or just December? I think they said just December, but I mean, they're way to they're push it damn, to the end. Damn well, waiting to the very end. I'm guessing that kind of just lines up with uh, the Disney Plus schedule because they got Hawkeye probably yeah. running through the end of December. So they'd like to have just one original go after another. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm you know, yes, I would obviously like that sooner, but uh, I'm okay with that, knowing it's coming. I mean, it's only it was only a few episodes, right? It's not a big ten episode, right? I I don't know. Okay, I yeah. thought they said it was only like four or five, but I could be wrong. Um, but no, I'm excited about this. Learning more about Boba Fett. I mean, one of the most loved and cherished characters in the whole Star Wars universe. Getting more on him and actually connecting it to. The prequels, you know, having the same guy, I can't think of the actor's name, my apologies. Having that guy come back and play the role, I think is genius, uh, the right way to go. Um, seeing, you know, kind of where he has been, because I, mean, I hope we get some of that. It doesn't all have to be, you know, backstory stuff, but I definitely want some backstory to see what, what he's been up to, you know, the past few decades. <laughs> How he got out of the Sarlacc pit. I want to see that. How did he get out? It's a good question to uh, answer for, for Star Wars fans, right? Now that, uh, so pre-Disney, uh, so I think it's called Legends Canon now because they kind of erased all the books, all the comics pre-Disney and call it Legends Canon. Um, but it was canon that he lived. I mean, it, it was in the books that he got out. So it's, it's not new, but I, I am curious to see how. <laughs> and they may have said it in the books before. I, I wasn't a big Star Wars book guy. I think if you claim yourself as a Star Wars books guy, you're a... Uh... You need to go out and look at the sun a little bit. <laughs> I, uh, I've read, I think, just one of the books. And it was pretty good. It, was, uh, it kind of connected uh, Empire and Jedi. It was between those two movies. So it was, it was pretty cool. But yeah, there's, there's so much to dive into there if you wanted to. I've tried in the past, or I've looked into it in the past. So there's just so many. I, was just, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, before we jump into the top of the 7 o'clock hour, and boy, howdy, did we get a great response from <laughs> uh, the uh, the social medias. Uh, we're going to talk about Dave Chappelle. Uh, Netflix just decided to drop just a very short teaser trailer for Dave Chappelle's technically his last contractually obligated uh, comedy special to Netflix, mm -hmm. and that's why it's being called Closer. So 
he made a crap ton of money. I heard he made somewhere around like fifty million dollars to uh, give Netflix all these specials. Yeah, yeah, he did okay. All right, just under five minutes, guys. Uh, I'm gonna start my coffee. All right, guys, once again, thanks for joining us this morning here on the live stream. Just a quick little note. This is our last show of, uh, of the week. Cotter and I are continuing on the trend of taking Fridays off. We don't regret that. <laughs> here, I'll shoot over the camera real quick so you don't have to look at an empty chair. Um, yeah, so we're, uh, we're taking tomorrow off because of me. I'm going to a little Chicago trip. Excited for that. Um, but, uh, like I said, we'll talk about Dave Chappelle. Then we'll get into our question of the day. What is the hottest thing that you've ever eaten? What happened? Do you regret it? Let us know, uh, on the chat. And, uh, if you'd like, feel free to call us up 1-800-394-1061. If you've got a great story that you'd like to share. Jeremy, I got a feeling you've made some mistakes in your life when it comes to hot stuff. Like most of us, I bet you got a story for us. If you, if you, uh, if you remember one, if you got one, please share it in the chat. We'll also give away some uh, more Shine Down tickets uh, in trivia today. I saw that our winner yesterday uh, reached out uh, yeah. over uh, over the socials. I did not get a chance to get to him yesterday, but I will get to him. Uh, I'll get to him today, along with our winner today. <laughs> hey, honestly, man, I I like I talked to Cotter. Uh, what was it, a couple weeks ago? I was like. I honestly think we could pull off four-day work weeks and still provide new content on that fifth day and not have to work. Uh, it's what Letterman did for years. Yeah. I mean, he they recorded two. He you know did two shows on a Thursday. I got no issue with it. I'm hundred <laughs> percent in. I would love to have a four-day work week. Technically, for the past month, we have. Good morning, Andrew. Now, now to be fair, I will be in tomorrow. I'm just not doing a show. I will be working. Uh, any Aaron Jones tickets up for grabs? Yes, we'll have tickets for Aaron Jones. I mean, shit, honestly, probably next week. Yeah, that show's coming up. Yeah, uh, yeah, ten twenty three. We'll probably, you know what? We'll probably. Ooh, that's actually it. Actually, probably won't do them next week. We'll do them the week after because we do have a few pair of Shine Down tickets left on top of what we're giving away. So, I. Uh, Andrew, the, yeah, within a week or two, we'll have uh, a lot more uh, tickets for uh, Aaron Jones coming up. Yeah, I want to go to that one. I'm, I'm in on that. Yeah, I think I kind of want to go just so I can see. Actually, what day is? I think that's the day I'm gone. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. You're gone again? <laughs> well, it's on a Saturday. Oh, I was going to say. It's on a Saturday. Okay. So uh, My wife can go. That'll be exciting. Yeah, so that day is the one day I'm going to the Shaky Knees Festival. Oh, right. Yeah, and I have to see Run the Jewels. I guess. Like, I, they, they don't, according to what I've seen, like, I've looked at their, like, tour schedules. Like, they don't tour a ton. Right. So I got to get it. I got to see them once. So I got to get it in. Aren't they, are they individual artists as well? And then they come together for Run the Jewels, or is it just Run the Jewels? Yeah, it's Killer Mike, and then it's always, I just, I even remember the other guy's name, <laughs> the white guy. Yeah. They're both incredible. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, they, they don't do a ton of touring, so right. I definitely want to go see him. Plus, I mean, Killer Mike's from Atlanta, so I think it'd be awesome to see him in his hometown. Yeah. All right, under 90 seconds. Back in with uh, Dave Chappelle, and we'll set up our call-in topic. Once again, hottest things you've ever eaten. I'm just uh, putting together the big fancy social media list that we uh, that we got from our question of the day. A lot of people did the the dual chip challenge or yeah. one chip challenge. Speaking of um, our buddies up in Massachusetts, Andrew uh, Andrew Tolley and Kelly Ann, um, they messaged me over the weekend. They did the dual chip challenge because oh. of us, and they sent. How me was it? Uh, they sent me video. Oh, I want to see it uh, of it. That's awesome. Kelly was a beast. Really, she is. She is a monster who has no soul. <laughs> um, because she's slightly ginger and quite like me. But man, unbelievable performance from her. Like it. Her uh, uh, her fiance not so much. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back.
Good morning. Thank you for hanging out. Dave Chappelle returning to Netflix with the new stand-up special called The Closer. It's coming out October 5th. They released a 30-second teaser. I mean, it was kind of a compilation, I think, of all of the stand-up he's done for Netflix so far. Right, yeah. So they took the five specials he's done previously and kind of built them all up towards this new reveal that the last special, which is coming out in next week. Yeah, October 5th. Yeah, October 5th. Uh, it's called The Closer. And I'm excited this. I mean, if you have not gone through and just watched the set of specials Dave Chappelle has has given to Netflix, they are flat out incredible. And the last one he did, it was in a socially distant yeah. setting, I think on some farm in Ohio. That's where he lives. So yeah, close yeah. to where he lives or where he lives. It was fantastic. It was incredible. And it wasn't even more of a comedy special. It was more of him just kind of, you know, thinking about life. And it was still hilarious. Is he the most important comedian we have right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, because it's like he he tells jokes, but he does it in a way to where he's telling stories. He's commenting on things. In my opinion, he's the closest thing we've ever had to George Carlin. Yeah, I mean, I think Dave Chappelle is probably, yeah, I mean, he's one of the most prolific storytellers and best comedians that are currently out there. Him, Bill Burr is incredible. Yeah. I mean, uh, Tom Segura, I think, is is one of those guys up and coming on the scene as well. It's just doing some fantastic stuff. But, yeah, 100%. Now, I read in a couple places, because of the name The Closer, there are people who are speculating this could be his last stand-up special. I'm like, no. Those people are spending way too much time on the internet. Come on. You know what Dave Chappelle likes? Money. <laughs> he got paid $40 million. He went away for a decade. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, uh, he'll be fine. He'll come back eventually. Uh, Netflix is going to back up the, the money truck again once this oh, deal's yeah. done. They, yeah. they don't want this to stop. All right, guys, coming up after 7 o'clock, what is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened, and did you regret it? I love this topic. Finally, a subject that we can talk intelligently on. We're both a couple community college dropouts, and and once I saw this question, I was like, finally. (laughs) All right, so call, comment, and text now, 800-394-1061. What's the hottest thing you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? Your stories after 7 o'clock. Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1061. So our buddy Chris Wagner, he is a big time, I call him a hothead, not because he's an angry fellow, but because <laughs> he loves, loves hot stuff. I mean, he absolutely does. He, he tells me a story about how when he was in the womb, his mom would actually eat habanero peppers as a snack. Habaneros. Gonna so, toughen my boy up. <laughs> so she, he has like this ungodly love for hot stuff. Like it's really... It's out of hand. It's 100% out of hand. Sadly, I don't think Chris Chris generally kind of watches. He, he's a lurker in the background. He's just one of the numbers. Right. But uh, he does like to enjoy and, and hang out with the Cotter and Marshall show. He's uh, working up in D.C., I think, this week. So okay. I don't know if he'll be a part of it or if he's on right now. But, man, he's probably got some stories about eating some hot stuff. I mean, he makes his own salsa. Okay. Like you go into Chris's house and he's one of those weirdos that has like one of those indoor kitchens. He's got like plants on a stand that have led lights. So he can grow like pepper plants inside Are of his house. Sure that's pepper plants? Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't know. A little uh, hydroponic action going on. Yeah. But, uh, he's, he's got some crazy stuff going on in his house. I'm like, what are these? You're like, Oh, those are just Thai chilies. We just throw them in. I'm like, these are pretty hot, man. This is crazy. So, yeah. He, He's probably got some stories, but uh, yeah, he's he's quite busy, you know, living okay. that DC life. Uh, sorry, I gotta do something here real quick. Uh, good morning, Sheila. Hope everyone's doing good this morning. Once again, uh, here in about ten minutes, we're about to dive into our question of the day: What is the hottest thing that you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? If you got a great story for us, uh, please feel free to share it on the chat or call us up one eight hundred. 394-1061. Speaking of calling us up, got a call right now. What up, Dan? Rock 1061, hello. Big, bald, and sexy. You what up, me? Charles? What's, Good morning. What's going on, man? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, having a day. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, want to let you know about a uh, hot pepper I ate. Okay. So, back in, I was probably in my 20s, uh, a few, few couples of us went out to uh, an authentic Mexican restaurant. I don't even know if it's in business anymore. Anyway, the dish, whatever I ordered at the time, you know, I was probably half in the bag drinking, um, came with this good-looking pepper on the side. I'm like, hey, that looks good. 
So everybody's like, you probably need to find out what kind it is before you eat it. I'm like, yeah, you know, I like hot food. Mm-hmm. So I took a bite. Whew, that's hot, man. Good God. Uh, took another bite. Well, about the third bite is when it hit me. And I literally started pouring water out of my eyes, out of my nose. <laughs> Even my ears were looking at water. <laughs> Such blisters on my tongue inside my mouth for about three days. When I got home, I ate three pounds of grapes trying to get rid of that hot. And do it. So, Charles, what type of pepper was it? I have no idea. I, I don't think I could talk to find out what kind it was. <laughs> Good. So now I stick to, uh, you know, Texas Peak and uh, Tabasco, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's a good call for you. Yeah. The hot life is not for you. <laughs> the, the mystery pepper life is not for me. <laughs> good I get point. that. Yeah, that's a solid point. Charles, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate it. Have a good day, man. I, see you thanks, man. See if I can get rid of that hiss. He was low. All right. yeah. Dan, what's up, man? Thanks for coming back to the show. Hey, today. Dan. How's it going, man? Dan's our new friend from YouTube. Uh, uh, sorry. All right. We're going to see if I can get rid of that real quick. Enterprise. Uh, uh, All right, guys. Once again, uh, our question of the day is what's the hottest thing you've ever ate? What happened? Did you regret it? Uh, I'm obviously going to talk about uh, the first time I've ever ate. Uh, I think one of our first major hot challenge was the one I was most affected from. So I'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, a, that's a great story that I don't even have to write notes for. I can just <laughs> right here in the brain pan. Uh, yeah, I've got, uh, yeah, the first the first death nut challenge I did mm. is still that and the toe of Satan. Those were the two absolute words. Yeah, I mean, yep. And then, I mean, technically, I could talk about the last death nut challenge. I had some unpleasant oh, yeah. results. Yeah. <laughs> Later. Okay, cool. Um, and she says, Toa Satan. Didn't that almost kill Cotter? Yeah, uh, it did. It almost killed both of us, man. Uh, that video still still exists out there in the world. That was uh, both of us drooling uncontrollably. And then I me about puking on Marshall. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we got a few minutes. I'm going to go get my coffee. Cotter thinks he's a barista, like it's a two-step process to get coffee over here. This guy, this guy must have, I, we have to ask Cotter when he comes back. He may have worked at Starbucks when he was a young man or some sort of coffee shop. Most people would just be like, I'm going to get a cup of coffee and then bring back a cup of coffee. Cotter, two-step process. Morning, Rhett. How you doing, buddy? So I had a funny conversation yesterday. Um, obviously, Rhett here. Uh, we got to hook him up with a PlayStation 5. A few weeks ago, I was able to give him my, uh, my account access so he could buy him one. So I was talking to Jake Thompson from Bob 106.9, our coworker. He sits uh, kind of over behind Cotter and to the left on a daily basis when we're not in here. So yesterday, I was talking to my coworker, Jake Thompson. And Jake Thompson was telling me, he's like, yeah, he goes, I haven't been playing any video games. I've been working, and I was on a little vacation. I've been doing my thing. I was like, oh, that's cool. He goes, but I have been playing the entire South Park series. And I'm like, so are you, are you playing video games or are you not playing video games? He's like, uh, well, no, not, not really, just a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And he goes, hey, did I tell you? And I'm like, tell me why. He goes, how about a PlayStation 5? And I was like, so you just told me you're not playing video games. But you're playing the entire South Park series, and you just got a PlayStation 5. I'm like, your stories make as much <laughs> sense as mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why he's banned. <laughs> and that's why he's banned. Uh, Dan, the devil's toenails are the hottest chip on earth. Ooh. I have not heard about that. Google that. Google I'm that. I'm doing it. Melissa, good Lord, that story. Thank you for sharing. Once again, guys, uh, our question of the day is, what is the hottest thing that you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? Feel free to drop in your stories or give us a call, just like Charles did here uh, this morning. 
I don't even see anything on it. Dan, do you have a link to the devil's toenails that you can drop in the chat, man? Uh, Rest says, my buddy just bought a PlayStation 5 as well. Got it from the Paris Island Exchange. Oh, I bet that's nice. One of the uh, army guys was just like, yep. My wife said, I can't have this anymore. Better get rid of it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, we still got like uh, about 10 minutes. Cool. No, a little under 10 minutes, but yeah. Um, speaking of video games, uh, I was going over these stories. So a uh, popular video game is uh, God of War. A mm-hmm. lot of people know the God of War series. So they're putting out a new game next year called God of War Ragnarok, which I have to say in like a James or uh, Sean Connery type of accent. Uh, so the guy who plays Kratos in the game, because you know they do like uh, motion capture yeah. now to make video yeah. games look like they're movies or whatever. Uh, apparently the game was supposed to come out this year. But it was delayed because of him, the actor in the game. So he put out a couple tweets last night uh, after a poll that was put up from a video game website called IGN about the best video game of all time. God of War, the original God of War that came out in 2018, uh, was named the best video game of all time. So he was very emotional about that news because obviously he was the lead actor in that. We'll come back with that story in a minute. Rock 1061, who's this? It's Tony. Hey, Tony. So my hottest food, I, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I do have a good story. Okay. Um, when I was younger, I grew up in the Southwest, and so most of the time when you eat Mexican food and stuff like that, there's always like a jalapeno mm-hmm. uh, with the dinner and stuff like that. And so growing up, I... I we used to eat them all the time. It wasn't that big of a deal. So when I was like nine or 10 years old, I went to go visit uh, my aunt in Illinois, who um, I had a cousin that was roughly my same age. And she had jalapenos. And she's like, you want one? I'm like, of course. I'm, she's like, um, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I, I totally want one for dinner. So I'm eating it. And I'm kind of taunting my cousin because you know, he thinks he wants one, but he's not sure. And I'm <laughs> right. like eating it like it's nothing. And he's like, and I was like, it's really not bad. And his mom is trying to convince him that he doesn't want it. And I'm doing my best to kind of like coax him into it. So finally he's like, okay, I, he takes a bite of mine. And the kid just turns bright red and he, like just eyes watering. And he's, he's literally crying. Next thing you know, he gets up and he is running to the bathroom and just, vomits it's the worst thing ever (laughs) my aunt is running after him and she is screaming at me you should have known better you know better than this i was like i thought he could handle it i needed it i got my butt beat so hard from my aunt for coaxing my cousin into doing this I yeah that was the that was the end of that vacation. I got sent <laughs> back two days later to oh my, my mother. Oh. Um, yeah, no, my aunt was so mad, and I think the only reason why I got back to two days is because she couldn't get me a flight sooner. Oh my lord, that's <laughs> damn. Harsh. Yeah, your aunt kind of sucks. <laughs> well, can't help up tightness, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, so it's not quite my story. And to this day, like we we see each other occasionally. And to this day, he does not eat hot foods. Like he he remembers that vividly. And he's not mad at me for it. Right. But yeah, he I would do it. I would send him like the the hottest pepper you can find for like Christmas. Yeah, I would just like buy him like Big jalapeno, bone. like uh, <laughs> like printed jammies <laughs> all the time. That's the just devil's toenail, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> It's mythical. We gotta find it. <laughs> Y'all yeah. have a, there. You go. Y'all have a great day. Thank Thanks, you, Tony. Tony. Bye. See you. All right, guys. Yeah, jive, diving into uh, our call-in segment here in I don't know four-ish minutes. Uh, right? We've got about f- six minutes. Okay. Do you want to gotcha. play one since we have two? Uh, yeah. One in the first break. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get All one right. set. I'm gonna have to edit one up, guys. Uh, I'll be right back.
Sorry. Sorry, Sorry guys. guys. Uh, give J's. <clears throat> All right, guys, got about a minute. We're uh, going to hear from Charles. Uh, Marshall's going to tell his story. Uh, Jay from uh, Coastal Empire chiming in with a good story, so we'll read that as well. <laughs> yeah, we we're totally telling each other secrets. No, we thought we were on. I didn't look down to see if the meter either. was Sorry, running. Guys. Generally, I have, I have a meter, an audio meter, to make sure that we're on when the video is on. I obviously didn't look, so my bad. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Jeremy says, to be honest, I'm not a fan or a handle hot stuff, so I could have been a chili or a basic pepper. I'm just weak. <laughs> You're strong, Jeremy. You You're stronger it. than you think you are. You could do it. All right, we got about 25 seconds. <clears throat> How about this, Jeremy? If you want to come to the station. Oh, yeah. I will give you a free pack of Solar Flare Sunflower. It's a heat challenge, kind of like the Death Nuts, but it's all sunflower seeds. So we'll give this to you. See if you can handle it. All right, guys. Be right back. Marshall, there's not many things I think we can call ourselves experts on. Right. But today's topic, we are experts on. What is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened? And did you regret it? You call, comment, and text 800-394-1061. I think the first real heat challenge that you and I ever did was the One Chip Challenge Yeah. Uh, back a few years ago. I mean, I consider that definitely... The hottest one, I mean, we've, we've ever done together. That really kicked off our career of doing really <laughs> stupid, hot challenges yeah. and making them even worse than they, they come prescribed as. But, uh, yeah, we did the One Chip Challenge, and, yeah, it was hot. We were in pain for 10 minutes. We were eating ice cream. I mean, we were doing everything we could to kill the burn. But the worst part about that hot challenge was what happened after, Cotter. I mean, from from urinating. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking, like, when I peed. It burned, and and that's not a thing that usually happens, guys. Before you make your jokes, I've uh, never had that. I've never I've never had that with the hot challenges, the pee thing. That it's never burned. It literally burns. It's crazy. It burned when I pee. Also, when I got home after doing, we were doing the afternoon show at that point. I had to sit on the toilet for about an hour, and I was screaming in pain. My wife comes to the door. She goes, "Are you okay? Do I need to call an ambulance?" And I'm like, "No, towels." <laughs> Towels! <laughs> at that point, I'm completely nude, <laughs> sitting on the toilet. I am I'm sweating because the one chip challenge is just like it's digesting in my stomach. So I'm getting that second burn. And then eventually I get a third burn yeah. all within like an hour. And it, I just feel like in you know, like one of those little aliens from the movie, like popping out of your chest or whatever. Like that's what it felt like. I felt like my insides were going to explode. At that very moment. And I, I felt like I probably lost about five pounds of water weight. <laughs> and like after after even I was able to like get off the toilet, I just laid on the cool tile for a while just to remind myself I'm still alive and cool. Like it was so bad. Do I regret it? No. <laughs> I've gone on to do even hotter things, hotter challenges. Yeah. But I, I had the worst reaction from doing the very first one chip challenge. All right, what is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? Big Bald and Sexy's got a story. Back in, I was probably in my 20s, uh, a few few couples of us went out to uh, an authentic Mexican restaurant. I don't even know if it's in business anymore. Anyway, the dish, whatever I ordered at the time, you know, I was probably half in the bag drinking, um, came with this good looking pepper on the side. I'm like, hey, that looks good. So everybody's like, you probably need to find out what kind that is before you eat it. I'm like, yeah, you know, I like hot food. Mm -hmm. So I took a bite. Whew, that's hot, man. Good God. Uh, took another bite. Well, about the third bite is when it hit me. And I literally started pouring water out of my <laughs> eyes, out of my nose, <laughs> even my ears to look the water. Such blisters on my tongue, inside my mouth. For about three days. When I got home, I ate three pounds of grapes trying to get rid of that hot. And oh it. So, Charles, what type of pepper was it? I have no idea. I, I don't think I could talk to find out what kind <laughs> it was. Three I, pounds of grapes. I, I that's a, that's maybe a a good idea. 
Grapes? Try some grapes afterwards? No. You don't think so? No, I well, uh, three pounds of them. Well, no, 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 no. no. But just as something maybe as a way to cool stuff down after you do hot chocolate. The the slight acidity of the grapes probably helped just a little bit. A lot of people, I mean, the two biggest things you can do, and here, once again, we're experts in this one topic (laughs) and one topic alone. The best things you can eat after eating something incredibly hot. If you do one of those stupid challenges, go to the store, buy the fattiest ice cream. Yeah. Go to get like a Briar's chocolate brownie. Chocolate chip, whatever chocolate, it has crazy high fat content, like thirty percent. Just and then when you when you have that burn in your mouth, put it in your mouth and just let it sit there yeah. for a minute. That that fat will coat your mouth and will help completely cut the burn. Also, pineapple juice, the acidity of pineapple okay. juice cuts through uh, the burn as well. Uh, just depends on what you like more. I recommend I recommend ice cream because I'm a fat guy. Yeah, ice cream is the go-to. Uh, he said he had blisters in his mouth. I've never gotten blisters no. from eating anything hot. I, th- I think he just maybe uh, he was so drunk earlier he burned his <laughs> his you know skin off the top of his mouth with an enchilada or something. Uh, uh, so what is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? Jay from Coastal chimed in. Now uh, he's a chef. I mean that that's kind of his trade. So he said oh, people let him cook. Yes, uh, it's disgusting. While in culinary <laughs> school, I took a bet. To take a drop of ghost chili extract for 20 bucks. Mm. The bottle said recommended dose was one drop per gallon. Right. So he took one drop. My eyes almost swelled shut. My face felt like it was bleeding. and My nose was so clogged I could barely breathe. I was shaking and lost my sense of taste for a day. Oh, my God. I mean, I needed the 20 bucks, but... <laughs> <laughs> but not worth the pain. I love I love how this this is the one of those stories that ends in with, well, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? I got the story about how I almost had an accident mm. in my car after the first death nut challenge. That's next. Foo Fighters fittingly making a fire. Tyler and Marshall Show, Rock 106.1. All right, uh, you've got that story. Do you want to save that extra call for break three? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we hang that. Um, I'll have to edit that up real quick, too. Uh, I'll do that during commercials. Though. Yeah, so many. All right, guys, thanks for hanging around this morning once again. Our question of the day is, what is the hottest thing that you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? Tell us your stories. Uh, once again, Kelly and Andrew are friends up in Massachusetts. Uh, they actually did the dual challenge, which is what we did for our previous Torture Tuesday. Sent me videos of it. Kellyanne, an absolute nutter beast. <laughs> Respect. She killed it. I mean, she they both ate it. Andrew, her fiance, is dying in pain on the other side of the table. I mean, he is over there. He's crying. He's right. oh, dying. He's got his kids in the background yeah. and making fun of him. Kelly just sits there. And I fucks him for like <laughs> 15 minutes. Right. She is just eyeballing him. And she's she's not letting him win this contest. So it, it was a great, great video that they shared with me over the weekend. That's awesome. Rock 1061 is this. It's Meredith. How hey. are you guys doing? Meredith, what's up? We are just talking about you, Meredith. Call yeah. in more. We love you. <laughs> I mean, you guys are awesome. Y'all make my drive to work amazing every day. So I was working in a restaurant, and we had a little guy that was from Ecuador, and he went home, and then he came back, and he had this bottle that literally had, like, X, X, X. I mean, it was just, (laughs) don't, and I go, I don't mind. It had a tiny little spoon that was probably the size of, like, a needle that you had to dip in. And I go, no, I'll just use a toothpick. So I dipped in a toothpick, and before I could get it in my mouth, it hit my eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. And I immediately started crying, and I was like, oh, my God, the capsaicins were that strong in it. I had to go wash my face. And then the hostess comes in, and she goes, hey, guess what? You were 14 top. They shut up early. And I'm like, I've got mascara running down my face. <laughs> and ever since then, I didn't even get to eat it. But I got Jesus. to smell it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's that talk. I mean, talk about something that hits you way too early. Uh, but good for you for, yeah. I guess, surviving it. <laughs> yeah, you're probably thankful you didn't yeah. eat it. Well, and I will say that one of the moms was there, and it was peanut butter crackers that she started throwing into my mouth. <laughs> Even though I, I didn't eat it, and she was like, just eat this. My child has eaten all of me before. <laughs> she's, to- she's tossing them in like little pieces of popcorn. Nice. Yes. 
All right, guys. We all have a good weekend. You too. Thank you, Meredith. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Uh, good to hear from Meredith. Uh, all right, got just over a minute. <laughs> Andrew says, not the hottest thing I had, but my daughter thought it'd be funny to put half a bottle of Dave's Insanity in my uh, chili. Sheila made it for me. Uh, when you don't know, it has, oh. uh, has that in it. It hits different. Mess me up. <laughs> See, yeah, that's unsuspected heat like that is It's not yeah. cool. It's not cool. Yeah, about 45 seconds. Uh, so you're telling your story, yep. and then what are we doing after that? Uh, there's, uh, I mean, do you have... Uh, oh, I got tons. Of okay, yeah. Then uh, you want to do a couple, and then I've got one from Robert, and then we can head into break, and then we got you know one, if not, or we can play both calls since the third break. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with Tessie's uh, Tessie story here. Okay. All right, I do mine. Tessie's Roberts out. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Be right back. What is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? 800-394-1061. I actually had the uh, video of the very first Torture Tuesday we ever did pop up on my timeline and in uh, Facebook a couple weeks back. I shared it to the Rock Facebook page. It's there. Mm -hmm. It was me drinking the Scorpion beer. And it was like, so right out of the gate, we were doing hot challenges. Right. But looking back now, that Scorpion beer was like drinking water. Oh, yeah. Compared to what we're doing. And the worst for me by far was the first death nut challenge. We're doing afternoons at the time. So we get done eating. I'm at the station a little bit later thinking I can get some work done, you know. But then it kind of hit me a little bit. Spent some time in the bathroom. Did my thing. Thought I was feeling good. So I got a call from somebody. He's like, hey, I'm downtown hosting trivia. I need a cable. Can you bring it down to me? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, sure, man. I got you. I pull out, go up Mall Boulevard. By the time I get to Abercorn, I went, I'm not making it downtown. I'm going to crap <laughs> myself in my car mm. if I don't get out. That's hard to explain to someone that you hire, like, uh, is the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I tear through the Kroger parking lot on Mall Boulevard. I get back to the radio station, make it to the bathroom just in time. I think I texted you from the bathroom sitting there yeah. in utter pain and misery. I ended up taking care of business, going into the studio. My pants were still around my knees, <laughs> and I just laid on the studio floor for a good 20 minutes. Why, why is it such a human reaction for when we eat something hot, we immediately, and we're like suffering, or like yeah. we're sweating, we just completely get <laughs> naked as human beings. I talked about my story right. where I was completely nude in the bathroom. You you essentially are half naked, almost fully naked in the Rock 1061 studios. It's an HR violation somewhere. I mean, I was sweating so much, I think I left a pool of sweat yeah. on, on the studio floor. It was... The worst pain I have ever been in. I mean, it was the it was the hottest thing I'd ever eaten up to that point in time. And how stupid of me to think I could drive 25 minutes downtown mm -hmm. and make it. And I realized after about three, not going to happen. Well, just so you know, I mean, it was shortly afterwards. We pulled those carpets up. We had to get rid of them. <laughs> I think it was mostly because of you. Probably because of me. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going back to our question of the day once again. What is the hottest thing that you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? Tons of stories are coming in on our stream today. We obviously stream the show, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Just search The Cotter and Marshall Show. Hang out with us every single morning and the fine folks of The Horde. Uh, now, we got a story from Tessie from our Facebook page, Cotter. Okay. She goes, so I worked in a bar in Mississippi, and two guys came in after a shift at one of the casinos with a stolen ghost pepper from the kitchen. <laughs> she goes, it was a slow night at the bar. They offered me $100 to eat the pepper, so I did it. 30 minutes later, I finally walked out of the bathroom from puking <laughs> and crying. The two guys were gone, but the bartender handed me 100 bucks and said, they said you earned it. <laughs> You know what? If they would have ditched out and not paid the hundred bucks, mm -hmm. biggest D move ever. Oh, one hundred percent. And Cotter, let me fit in one more story yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. This is coming from Rhett from the stream. Uh, Rhett works in law enforcement. Rhett says, 
While wrestling with a guy, my partner went to pepper spray him. And shot it on both him and me. Oh, no. I got a stream straight in the face and mouth. Cool. He wrote, not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, Red. <laughs> uh, Red just got completely bukkake from the <laughs> from the pepper spray. Now, he goes on to say, uh, he goes, uh, my nose was a, a snot faucet for the remaining <laughs> shift, and it looked like I had been at the beach all day long. All oh, right, we feel you, bro. What is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, Robert hit us up on Facebook. He said a Garden Fresh habanero. I did it for $5 because I needed cigarettes at the time. I was 17 years old. Wow. I ate it, threw money at a friend to hurry to get me something to drink. He came back with Sprite. Also, don't drink Sprite. Milk. Go milk. I was taken to the only gas station I knew, crying the entire time. I knew I wouldn't get carded. Went back to school. He was seeing colors. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Passed out. Woke up to the bell ringing at the end of civics class. Friend asked what I took. I said peppers. He's like, what the hell were you thinking? (laughs) He was seeing colors and passed out in class. Did he he just mistake peppers with mushrooms? Because... (laughs) I think that's the same exact reaction. I think I think Robert took drugs that day. Uh, what is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? More of your stories coming up next. If you got one you'd like to share, hit us up, 800-394-1061. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch that came in on the stream right when we uh, hit off the break. Uh, Sean just dropped one. He goes, I don't generally eat super hot stuff. I need flavor with my heat. I don't like stuff that's hot to be hot. I did once when I was a kid accidentally use Blair's Sudden Death Sauce as ketchup. My uncle was visiting us in Savannah from South Florida and brought it in. Uh, brought it in. I had to sign a waiver and everything. It was painful, but good. <laughs> it's painful, but good. Uh, speaking of Rhett's story with the, you know the uh, the pepper spray bukkake. <laughs> Uh, Eric says, been there, Rhett. Some young private tried to attack the elderly owner of a bar we frequented in our 20s. Caught a good bit of pepper spray helping the bouncer subdue this guy. (laughs) Jesus Christ, guys. Uh, Holly says, one of my best friends back as teenagers, uh, we were at his cousin's house. His parents were out of town, so we were just hanging out there. And my friend got dared to eat a ghost pepper. He did. I was pouring sweat trying uh, to do anything and everything he could to stop the burn. So he grabs a jug of milk out of the fridge, starting to chug it, and they found out that the milk was curdled. Oh, (laughs) no! Uh, So after that, he threw up for the rest of the night. Uh. (laughs) That's the worst. It's That's the instant, like, you've already been betrayed by your body, by the way it's reacting to the pepper, but you're already, you're getting betrayed by a a gallon of milk as well. (laughs) Feel so bad for him. Um, we are definitely going to move right from uh, this last break into. Oh yeah, I know. Solicit. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you want to play one of those last yeah, calls? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, give me a second, guys. I'll be right back.
Sorry, guys. I'm just reading uh, while Cotter was editing up uh, some of the audio. I was just reading some of the uh, reactions from people online uh, from uh, from our comment from our posts, and it was pretty funny. All right, guys, once again, uh, we're in commercial break right now. We're going to be uh, coming back in just a moment, wrapping up our question of the day, which is what's the hottest thing you've ever eaten. After that, we'll go right into trivia for Shine Down tickets. They play next Thursday night in Augusta at SRP Park, a.k.a. Disgusta. <laughs> All right. Um, got about three minutes. A day to remember everything we need. We'll play back Tony's call. Oh, Sean's on. Uh, Sean, I got a story for you here. Uh, we'll probably get to it after trivia. Thought of you instantly when I saw this. Uh, I've got. Bum, bum, bum. I got a couple ones I can use over here. Okay. Um, uh, is the one we want to end it on? Do we want to end it on the call? Now let's not, let's start off with the call. Yeah. Just do like a, a soft intro, get us back into it, go into the call. Um, I'm going to mention Andrews, uh, because he's, he mentions that he watched us do it first. Okay. So I'll use that Perfect. as. I have uh, Chris's, Chris Bazemore's, which is just a silly, fun, funny one. Uh, Ryan Zeller's is a good story. I don't know if you want to do that one. Yeah, I can do that one. Do you, how many do you have? Uh, I could do Andrew's and I could do Chris's. Okay. Um, do call. How about this? Uh, Grunt it to the call. I'll do the two short ones, and then you end do it with Ryan. You end it with Ryan. Sounds good. All right, got about ninety seconds. You're probably gonna have to edit up Ryan's story. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys, and we know sometimes it's uh, it's difficult to write things. But he he had an issue. Words were hard for him. <laughs> Once again, guys, we're going into uh, trivia the moment we come out of uh, this next break. And if you want to play, feel to uh, feel free to call in. We're going to hook you up with a pair of Shine Down tickets. <laughs> uh, my quiz today, if uh, Cotter has chosen to play, includes a question about a turd. <laughs> so... Uh, in case you want to hear that question today, you better choose Cotter to take on. And are you smarter than a community college <laughs> dropout trivia? All right, we've got about 30 seconds. All right, guys, be right back. What is the hottest thing you have ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? So many great stories. Tony convinced her cousin to eat a pepper, got her vacation cut short. When I was younger, I grew up in the Southwest. And so most of the time when you eat Mexican food and stuff like that, there's always like a jalapeno uh, mm -hmm. with the dinner and stuff like that. And so growing up, I, I we used to eat them all the time. It wasn't that big of a deal. So when I was like nine or 10 years old, I went to go visit uh, my aunt in Illinois, who um, I had a cousin that was roughly my same age. And she had jalapenos. And she's like, you want one? I'm like, of course. I mean, she's like, um, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I, I totally want one for dinner. So I'm eating it. And I'm kind of taunting my cousin because you know, he thinks he wants one, but he's not sure. And I'm <laughs> right. like eating it like it's nothing. And he's like, and I was like, it's really not bad. And his mom is trying to convince him that he doesn't want it. And I'm 
doing my best to kind of like coax him into it. So finally, he's like, okay, I need a bite of mine. And the kid just turns bright red and like just eyes watering and he's he's literally crying next thing you know he gets up and he is running to the bathroom and just vomits it's the worst thing ever (laughs) my aunt is running after him and she is screaming at me you should have known better you know better than this i was like i thought he could handle it i needed it i got my butt beat so hard from my aunt for coaxing my cousin into doing this. I yeah, that was the that was the end of that vacation. I got sent <laughs> back two days later to oh my, my mother. Uh, um yeah, no, my aunt was so mad and I think the only reason why I got back to two days is because she couldn't get me a flight sooner. A little harsh, right? Yeah, Auntie's kind of a jerk. I'll harsh. throw it out there. I'll I throw it out. I hope she's listening right now. You know what? Overreaction. Eight, nine-year-old <laughs> Tony just having some fun with yeah. her cousin hanging yeah. out. Cousin's kind of a wuss. Rough, I was going to say a worse Rough. word than that. <laughs> All right, Cotter. Uh, once again, our question of the day is, what is the hottest thing you've ever eaten? What happened? Did you regret it? You can hit us up, obviously, uh, in tons of different ways. Uh, 1-800-394-1061. You can text us or call us, but... We got a great comment from our social media, from our Facebook page. Uh, Andrew said this, the dual chip challenge, which we know very well because we just did it yep. about a week and a half ago. He said, I watched y'all do it, so I tried it. It was hot. <laughs> now, Andrew, I want to say this. I want I want everyone to listen real closely. Do not do as we do. <laughs> Let us do the dumb stuff and then laugh at us. Do not repeat what we do because what we do we are experts at yes <laughs> eating dumb, 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 dumb hot things. We're very good at it. Now the we suffer from these things, oh. but we do it for your entertainment. We suffer so yeah, bad. Yeah, but do not do not do as we do. <laughs> Just watch what we do. Did you have another? Oh yeah, I got one more. Okay, Chris hit us up. He wrote, "Your mom, I threw up. Had to get a bunch of shots." <laughs> whoa, 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 Wait Chris! Shots fired, what? Chris. Shots fired, sir. All right, the hottest thing ever eaten by Ryan Zeller. He said, my homeboy had this hot sauce called Devil's Sauce. Anyway, it was given to him at a party. He tried licking it off a toothpick, and he was lit up. Had to go buy some milk. Well, Ryan said, me having elephantitis in the balls. Oh, yeah. Covered my finger in the sauce, Mm. and it ate it. Never touch it. At first, I was like, oh, this ain't crap. This is like a reaper or ghost pepper. Then it gradually got hotter over time. My lips swelled up. My finger was burning, but I didn't drink the milk. I just kept <laughs> drinking ice cold beer. It lasted all night. Even the girl I was with at the time said her mouth was on fire after kissing me. Ugh. Yeah, that's the extract stuff. That stuff I never want to mess with. Like doing the the spicy one chip challenges, totally cool with. The people who mess with those extracts, I mean, those are concentrate. Yeah. That's concentrated death. Yeah. I will never do that. But if you dare me, <laughs> I may. Coming to a church or Tuesday soon. Uh, are you smarter than a community college dropout? Now's the time to call and play. 800-394-1061. Great tickets again to give away, Marshall. That's right. Shine Down tickets. They're playing next Thursday in Augusta at SRP Park. If you want a pair of tickets to go, check out Shine Down next Thursday. Be the first person to call in right now. 1-800-394-1061. You'll take on one of us And Are You Smarter Than a Community College Dropout Trivia? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, thank you guys for the stories. Those are great, by the way. Rock 1061, who's this? Hello. Hey, who's this? Hey, hey this is Jared. Jared? Yes, sir. Hey, right, man, you got to play some trivia today. Who do you want to take on, myself, Cotter, or Marshall? Mm, let's go. Connor. All right. Love it. Good luck, sir. You said your name was Jared? Yes, sir. All right, man. So here's the deal. Seven questions, 60 seconds. You're playing Are You Smarter Than a Community College Dropout Trivia? And obviously, we're two dropouts of community college, so you probably got a pretty good chance, but we'll see how you do. A couple rules to the game. First and foremost, if you don't know the answer to one of the questions, just say pass. We'll come back to it if we have enough time. And then if there's a multiple choice question, I'll give you a heads up before I ask it. Other than that, your time will begin. After I ask the first question, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Question number one. Which day of the week did January 1st, 2017 fall on? 
Tuesday. Incorrect. Question number two, multiple choice. How many stitches are there on an official baseball used in Major League Baseball? 108, 110, or 133? Uh, 108. That is correct. Question number three, who or how were the parents of the siblings on the TV show Party of Five killed? Oh, pass. Uh, question number four, with what global issue does the 2016 Paris Agreement deal with? Uh, global warming. That is correct. Question number five, what skateboarding actor-to-be plays the main character in Sonic Youth music video for 100%? Uh, repeat. Uh, what skateboarding actor to be plays the main character in Sonic Youth's music video for 100%? Oh, shit. Uh, Tony Hawk. Uh, incorrect no, question. That's to be. <laughs> question number six. What bird has the scientific name Turtus migratorius? Was it a sparrow, a cardinal, or a robin? A cardinal. That is incorrect. Final question. What character is best known for their phrase, What's up, Doc? Oh, that's uh, uh, Bugs Bunny. That is correct, and your time is up. You got three out of seven correct today, Cotter. All right, Jared here got three out of seven correct today. Jared, okay. hold on line for me uh, real quick. We're going to ask Cotter those same exact questions. Cotter, you know the rules. Are you ready? Bring it on. All right, question number one. What day of the week does January 1st, 2017 fall on? A multiple choice? Nope. Sunday. <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two, multiple choice. How many stitches are there on an official baseball used in Major League Baseball? 108, 110, or 133? Uh, 133. Incorrect. Question number three. How were the parents of the siblings on the TV show Party of Five killed? Car crash. That is correct. Question number four. With what global issue does the 2016 Paris Agreement deal with? Oh, uh, uh, climate change. That is That is correct. Question number five, what skateboarding actor-to-be plays the main character in Sonic Youth's music video for 100%? Jason Lee. That is correct. Question number six, what bird has the scientific name Turtus Migratorius? Multiple choice. Is it a sparrow, a cardinal, or a robin? Uh, a sparrow. That is incorrect. Question number seven, what character is best known for the phrase, what's up, Doc? Uh, a Bugs Bunny. That is correct. All right, Connor, you got five out of seven correct today. All right, Jared, I got you, but it doesn't matter. You still got some tickets for Shinedown. Right on. Hey, I, I had fun doing it. First time I've ever been on one of these uh uh, game shows. <laughs> we'll call back anytime, man, and definitely play. Yeah, we'll call you after the show today. Get uh, your mailing information. We'll mail those Shinedown tickets out to you immediately for next Thursday's show. All right, man. Sounds great. Had fun. Thanks, Thanks Jared. Man. Appreciate it, man. All right, Kyle, let's go ahead and go over the correct answers real quick for Are You Smarter Than a Community College Dropout Trivia? One of uh, the stupider games I've ever put together, yeah, I think. Uh, question number one, which day of the week did January 1st, 2017 fall on? Uh, you asked if there was multiple choices. There are seven choices. Well, I like to think you shorten it up a little bit. I mean, seven's a lot of choices. The answer is Sunday, and you somehow guessed that right. It's going beginning uh, of the week. Question number two, how many stitches are there on official baseball used in Major League Baseball? That'd be 108. Okay. Uh, question number three, how are the parents of the siblings on the TV show Party of Five killed? That's a car accident. Question four, what's the global issue? Does the Paris Agreement deal with climate change? Question number five, what skateboarding actor to be with the main, uh, what's the main character in Sonic Youth music video for 100%? That is Jason Lee. You the know, only Mr. skateboarding actor I knew. Mr. Uh, My Name is Earl yeah. uh, in all the Kevin Smith Mallrats movies and, and all that fun stuff. Question number six, what bird has the scientific name Turtus Migratorius? That That's would be a robin. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who would have ever known that? <laughs> and question number seven, what character is best known for their phrase, what's up, Doc? That would be Bugs Bunny. All right, back at it on Monday. Are you smarter than the community college dropout? Brand new time around 730. Your chance to play and win. Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1 to 6 1. All right, guys, we're going to edit that up. We'll be right back on the stream with audio.
All right, guys, back on the stream. Thanks for hanging with us while Cotter was editing up what you just heard live on our live stream. We're going to play back the audio here on the radio in just a moment. So we got about, I don't know, got quite some time to fill before we jump into the top of the 8 o'clock hour. Top of the 8 o'clock hour, we're going to be doing our final Mount Rushmore of the season. We only do it for like three months out of the year, like July to uh, the end of September-ish. July, August, September. Yeah, three months-ish. Um, with that, uh, we're going to wrap up with the greatest high school movies of all time. So uh, we're going to jump into that discussion, top of the 8 o'clock hour. And then uh, bottom of the 8 o'clock hour, I'm going to quiz Cotter in the face with a Jeopardy-styled rock and roll quiz. Like Cotter did the easiest Jeopardy questions of all time. And uh, now we're going to uh, continue that Jeopardy theme. And uh, we'll, we'll flip it on Cotter and see how he does. So today is my wife's birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy today birthday. Is, today is the wife's birthday. She's 30-something years old. Just an angel. An utter angel. I've, been, uh, I've done the birthday month celebration. Right. No, you can do a lot of things. I've done birthday weeks before. I've done birthday, you know, just the day. But I went yeah. month this year. So this year I went uh, a birthday gift every Saturday-ish. Um, I, I, uh, sprinkled in some cameos. I got, a, right. I got a cameo from, uh, uh, what's his name? Taylor Wayne, the drummer of in flames. Okay. Uh, she's a big fan of him or that band. Uh, she's all, I also got her a cameo from Dan Housen. That was, awesome. he's a, he's a professional wrestler, but he's not in like one of the big wrestling. Needs, I want him on AEW. Yeah. He, he's just a silly, a uh, silly guy, but, uh, I got, uh, I got him. Uh, to uh, do a cameo as well. And then, uh, yeah, I've just been sprinkling in uh, presents uh, along the way. We uh, For her birthday and kind of my birthday both, because it is quite expensive, uh, we take each other to Halloween Horror Nights. So we went to Halloween Horror Nights uh, for the birthday as well. So uh, today, it's just real simple. Today, she gets her final birthday present. Yeah. Uh, bought a small cake because we're going to be going to Chicago over the next yeah. few days. and Don't want just cake laying around. Cake laying around. Yeah. So... Got a small birthday cake, and then uh, tonight uh, she's going to watch me host trivia so I can make an extra few <laughs> bucks because in Chicago we'll probably spend way too much money. Yeah, I get that. Uh, so going to make some some extra dollars before we head out. But uh, that's that's the birthday. Hope she, she hope she enjoys it. Sounds like fun. Uh, Sean, I finished the Harry Potter movies. It was enjoyable, but left many questions. Movies left stuff out. They left so much out. Yeah, you said, I guess I'm going to read the books. Read the books. They're awesome. Uh, there is rumors that they're going to be making a uh, TV series version of Harry Potter. I am all for, because there's so much that are in the, if, if they that go back to sense. the books, there's so much to live out. I mean, you could do one season is an entire school year. Yeah. And I think that, I love that idea. I, I really, I, I hope they do it, because I, I think you'll really get more out of it. Mm -hmm. And in the last season, they'll do, they'll pl split into two seasons. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they leave a lot out. You you definitely need the books as kind of a base when you go in with the movies. I didn't, and the movies were just great. <laughs> <laughs> movies are fun, man. They're definitely fun. But toward the end, especially the last few movies, those books got so massive. You know, they tried to cram as much as they could in, but they leave a bunch out, or they just hope you kind of know A to C because you read mm -hmm. the book, and yeah. So I'm trying to decide what I should download and watch on the plane. Right. Because I think we have, I think it's direct flights from Chicago and back, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Out of Savannah, which we're taking. So I'm trying to figure out, I think it's like a two-hour flight-ish. So about. I think I'm going to download the Squid Game. I think I'm going to download like the next couple episodes on my phone and just watch the Squid Game on the uh, airplane. Watched episode two. Yeah. It's a slog. Oh, is it? I, I was... Because the end, have you seen the first one? Right? Yeah, I saw the first one. The ending of the first one, you're like, oh, shit. I mean, you're so, what the, oh, my God. And then the second one, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not giving up on it, but I did not, it, there's some nice elements to it, but I didn't enjoy it as near as much. Yeah. Uh, Elaine, what was the question of the day? The question of the day was, what was the hottest thing you've ever eaten? 
Uh, what happened? Did you regret it? But uh, yeah, we we've moved on from there. We did trivia, so we're about to jump into our Mount Rushmore. But what was the hottest thing that you've ever eaten, Elaine? Let us know. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do the Squid Game. And generally, I like to watch like a stand-up comedy special, but I don't think anything's really come out recently, right. like big stand-up comedy wise. <coughs> Ooh, uh, Rhett says he finished the Squid series. Uh, Rhett, what did you think of uh, the quiz, uh, the Squid show? Was uh, was it a good series overall? I saw a I saw an article talking about a cookie game they play in the series. Okay, I didn't read it because I didn't want to ruin, right. ruin it for myself. But did they do like is every episode? Do they have like one of those games? Did they have a game in an episode two that they had to play? No. Okay. So yeah, so apparently there is a a cookie game they yeah. play that is quite r- ridiculous. So yeah, people it, are talking about it. One of the episodes. So I'm trying to think if it was the ending of the first episode or beginning of the second. Um, it took a turn I didn't expect. I mean, I don't want to, I mean, I don't know if it's spoiling, but I won't say anything. It just took a turn I didn't expect, which led into the second episode that I felt just was, eh. I mean, I, I, I'm intrigued, especially after the first episode. I'm like, and I want to see where, where this goes. Right. But yeah, the second episode was not, I just, it was just okay. Oh, oh, breaking news. Make the noise. Limp Bizkit has officially released their new song, Dad Vibes. Are you serious? Can you find it? Uh, I I want to debut the new Limp Biscuit song. Uh, long last, Limp Biscuit has finally released their new song "Dad Vibes" after going viral earlier this year. Uh, let's see, blah blah blah. Let's see. Last night, late last night, along with offering pre-save links for the song, Limp Bizkit shared the single artwork for Dad Vibes. Um, it features a stylized black and white image of Durst captured at Palooza. The single then emerged early this morning. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, it literally came out hours ago. All right, let me, uh, let me go check something. I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry, guys. If we could play some new Limp Bizkit on the radio, we're going to freaking do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, it took me a second to finally realize that the title to the show meant to, what the title of the show meant today. Very clever. Oh, huh. I honestly am still trying to figure that out. Don't ruin it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the squid game on Netflix apparently is, is ridiculous. Uh, Sean says, did you watch the Norm Macdonald special Hitler's dog or something? Oh, I haven't. I should download that. Dude. Thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, Dan said my brakes gave out. Holy shit, dude. Are you okay? He goes at work laughing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, I guess. Uh, right, says Netflix has a few new horror movies that just dropped. Squid Games was awesome. Not every episode has a game. The Cookie Game was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to download uh, the Norm MacDonald uh, comedy special. And then, yeah, I'll download a couple episodes of that to watch on the plane. Good call. Good call, everyone. Yeah, I, I there's that uh, Midnight Mass TV show that apparently is fantastic. Uh, the guy that did uh, The Haunting at Hill House. Uh, he put out a new like eight episode series um out on Netflix. It just came out like I think a week ago. Uh and people are just like raving about how great it is. So uh that's something I want to watch, but I think I want to watch it like on a on a TV in my house, not just my you know tiny ass phone. So uh that I think I'm gonna leave for uh sometime this month, but I'm definitely gonna get to it. If you guys have any other suggestions on what I should watch on the plane, please drop it into the chat. I hope Cotter's able to find this new Limp Biscuit song. Once again, Dad Vibes, they they kind of debuted it at Lollapalooza. It was like one of the only shows they played this year. But apparently they officially put it out just like hours ago. Um, I just happened to be crossing over some music news and I saw that. Rhett, what do you think of Midnight Mass so far? I mean, you said you're you're watching it right now, probably a couple episodes in. I can I can bet.
Watch the Lord of the Rings on the plane. Jesus, man. The extended editions? I'm not going to be on a plane that long. <laughs> uh, Charles, uh, I always watch the backside of my eyelids on plane trips. Yeah. Thing is, like, my plane, my, uh, my plane out tomorrow is like a 1.30. And I'm already, I'm already going to be sleeping in. I mean, I usually wake up, like, at, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock. I already have tons of sleep because I'm going to be able to sleep in tomorrow. Uh, any luck? No luck? No luck. I sent out an email. See if I get a response. Damn it. Um, all right. So, Sean, I, I saw this and I instantly thought of you. Arby's releasing a uh, real country style rib sandwich. That's not what made me think of you. This is. Uh, in a celebration of this, they are releasing Arby Smoked Sweats. They are Arby's sweatpants and top. Oh, yeah. That smell like smoked meats. Holy shit. That's a game changer for Sean. Smells like smoked meats. Dude, what's the link? Drop the link in the chat so uh, Sean can I will. go buy them immediately. <laughs> Sean, you have to buy this outfit. <laughs> if it's still available, buy it. And it, if you don't wear it when you come back to Savannah <laughs> later this year, I do not want to know you as a person. It looks like they'll be released in four days. All right, Sean, yet. Sean, do your best to buy it. <laughs> do your best to buy it. Uh, the finest hickory smoke sweatpants available. Dude, those are sick. One color only. Very effable. Barbecue burgundy. Yeah, they're just, they're just, they're maroon. <laughs> burgundy. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to step out for one second. I have to, I have to talk to um, Stacy real quick about an event. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, guys, got about seven-ish minutes. Uh, some Mars Simula from Chevelle, get to some Stained. Uh, then it is uh, into our Mount Rushmore. So uh, drop your Mount Rushmores in. Mount Rushmore of high school movies. The best high school movies ever. I think the 80s uh, was the sweet spot for high school movies. Um, so uh, mine will uh, uh, you know, lean heavily into that decade. Uh, there has been some good ones that have come out, you know, a little bit more recently. But I think the 80s uh, is the heyday. John Hughes, high school movies. <laughs> um, so uh, what, what would be your Mount Rushmore? Even just your favorite high school movie ever. Uh, all right. One other thing I got to do real quick. Where'd that go? Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Oh, this. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, high school movies. So uh, movies set in high school. Uh, movies with high school students. Um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. 16 Candles. That kind of stuff. Uh, Elaine. Fast Times. Breakfast Club. Mean Girls. I've never seen <laughs> Mean Girls. Uh, that kind of stuff, Dan. So, yeah, movies set in high school. Um, and like I said, I think the eighties and John Hughes was, uh, the heyday of this. And I think my list will really show my age. Well, um, cause I don't think I have anything past 1993 on my list. I, I do have some in case, uh, others get chosen, but, uh, I feel pretty good. There's the uh, number four on my list. I'm questioning. I may make a last minute swap out. I know Marshall won't have it, but I may swap it out with something else. It, it holds a special place in my heart. But after thinking about it, I don't know if I can make my Mount Rushmore. We'll tell you what it is. Uh, 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 uh. 
Uh, I think you guys are talking about it. And, uh, no show tomorrow. I'll be around. I'll be working. Just uh, not the show. Be rolling out a best of. Uh, we have shows Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. I fly out Wednesday right after the show. Uh, I'm gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Basically taking a week off. High School Musical rocks, man. <laughs> I saw High School Musical 3 in the movie theater because uh, my kid was a major High School Musical fan. Yeah, that was a thing. Uh, are you going to the Draft House Friday night? Is there something going on at the Draft House Friday night? Am I missing out on something? Uh, I know Marshall won't because he'll be gone. I'm not opposed to going to the Draft House on Friday if there's something cool going on. The wife and I can mosey on down maybe. Uh, Clueless. I, you know what? I really like Clueless. I think Clueless is good. Oh, a flip cup event. Oh, shit. Uh, we did one. We did one of those years ago when I was, uh, when we were in Illinois. We did a flip cup event at a bar. It was one of the most intense promotions, events, whatever that I have been involved with. It was stupid. So many people took that thing so stinking seriously. Uh, we had a dispute, I think, toward the end. I thought we were going to get killed. Were you around when we did the Flip Cup event in Peoria? We did a promotion where we were giving something away. I want to say we were at Sully's or someplace like that. And we did a Flip Cup event, and people took that so effing seriously. And there was like a close call at the end and people were getting pissed. Thought I was going to get knifed in the parking lot. <laughs> I know. I don't think I was okay. there for that one. That sucks. Uh, yeah. I, sorry. I just saw Cam Cross's comments. He said, good morning, guys. Did you see the candle boxes at the rail last night seeing karaoke? Uh, so at the, that's end, awesome. at the end of the candle box show, uh, Kevin Martin's like, we're staying the night tonight and you're probably going to be able to catch us at a karaoke bar tomorrow. Yeah. So he, he flat out said that to everyone. And he talked about that in our uh, interview yeah. that we had with Kevin Martin as well. Speaking of, can you send me that audio? Oh, yes. Uh, did he sing Eddie Money, uh, Cam, if you saw that, if you were there? Did he sing Eddie Money? Because he said, well, I don't remember the song, but he had a go-to song, and it was an Eddie Money song. Uh, Big Bald and Sexy's High School Movies, Friday Night Lights, Varsity Blues, Wild Things. Dude, I like Varsity Blues. I think that is an underrated movie. I think that's a really good movie. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen it. Really? Yeah. James Vanderbeek. Don't think I don't think I hung with the beak. That's good. So I got a list of uh, movies for our Mount Rushmore. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I've got six. I've got six laid out, and then I got a list backup just in case you you happen to like just have the same exact list as me. I doubt it, but yeah, I think I think our I think our age difference will separate us on this list a little bit. Would be my guess. Got seven. Um, my number four, I may call an audible. I, I, I didn't. It's, it's a movie that holds a special place in my heart, and I felt it needed to be on the Mount Rushmore just for that reason. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it needs to be on my Mount Rushmore, so I may bump that one. So I've, I've got films from 1976 to 2003. Oh, you're going deep. So yeah, I've got, I've got a, I got a good range. Oh, 2007. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Sean says, tell Marshall to have the suit delivered to the studio or his house. I can't pack that in my suitcase. It'll infuse everything. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Walking through the airport like, do you, do you smell smoked meat? Sean, you, uh, the address to the radio station's public knowledge, 401 Mall Boulevard. Uh, just have it delivered here, <laughs> 401 Mall Boulevard, Suite 101D. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Cam wasn't there. Just saw pictures. Uh, that's awesome, though. Yeah, he said he loves the karaoke, man. Dude, I'm telling you, that Candlebox show, everyone who didn't go to Candlebox, you fucking missed <laughs> out. Kevin Martin sounds amazing. And yeah. I know what you're saying, Candlebox, they're the dudes with two songs. They got a hell of a lot more than yeah. that. Yeah. 
Uh, their new stuff sounds and plays really well live, too. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, about 15. We'll be right back. What are the greatest high school movies of all time? Mm -hmm. About to put together our Mount Rushmore. Feel free to chime in with your favorite movies. You can drop us a text, 800-394-1061. You can also hit us up on the chat with the stream, which you can find on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So uh, thank you for hanging out on air and on the stream this morning. So, Marshall, uh, it is the Mount Rushmore of high school movies. Um, I, I don't know if they still they don't make them as much anymore or maybe you're just not eye in high school movies as much as you used to. as i get older yeah. it just gets creepy if i'm into yeah. high school movies or maybe you'll get more into high school movies now that both of your children have left the house maybe. and you'll start looking for the younger generation again <laughs> huh cotter maybe huh? that's it you're not banned yet you will be i will be give me time <laughs> uh all right so we're gonna flip a coin as he goes first yeah let's do this all right uh go ahead and call it heads oh that was the worst <laughs> That was Did it even flip? No, I just kind of, <laughs> my thumb stopped working. Hold on, uh, let me do it again. Heads. Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good one. Heads. All right. Son of a bitch. Oh, this is this is easy. Um, I'm going 1993, the year before I graduated high school. Uh, this movie, about the last day of uh, high school in 1976, yep. I'm going dazed and confused. No, it was a great choice. It was like a sneaky, amazing cast too with Days of Confused. I mean, Matthew McConaughey, Ben Affleck, and like tiny little little roles in there. Jason London was the yeah was the headliner. So I mean, like it was definitely one of those movies that I think everyone could appreciate. Great first pick. It was on my list uh, for sure, Cotter. Um, I I this is one of those movies that I can watch at any point. I, you know, if I, if it's on, you know, uh, TV, and I I jump in, I'm 15 minutes in, 30 minutes in, it doesn't matter. I will sit and watch the entire thing. The soundtrack is phenomenal. I mean, Matthew McConaughey. I mean, he's had an iconic career, Oscar-winning actor. Yeah. But this movie, I would say, is still what he's best known for. All right, all right, all right. He still uses that. <laughs> These girls keep getting. <laughs> I stay the same age. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, that's a good first pick. Let's go. That's a good first pick. Um, mm, there's so many great, to, great ones to choose from, but I think I will go this because I don't. I got one I want to pick, but I don't think you'll pick it. Okay. Let's just go 1985. Let's go The Breakfast Club. Okay. Let's go The Breakfast okay. Club. Take take place mostly in a high school, but on a Saturday. Yeah. Detention. Uh, obviously, Emilio Estevez, Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson, Paul Gleason, uh, John Hughes directed. He he directed some of like the best '80s movies of all time, and he like put out one a year for like ten straight years. Yes. John Hughes, an amazing director. Uh, this was a great movie. I remember watching this like on on Fox. It was like you know remember. When, and then once again, how old I am. Uh, <laughs> Fox at like 12 noon would always play a movie after cartoons on Saturdays. Right. And I would always probably watch that 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 movie. Breakfast Club was was part of me growing up. That was one of the movies that I would watch a lot. I think it's the measuring stick for all high school movies. I mean, I think this came out and you're like, oh, I get it. This is what it could be. Uh, the height of the Brat Pack, the height of John Hughes. Yeah. Uh, the cast was amazing. I this is a solid choice. Uh, I was really hoping to make it on my Mount Rushmore. Yeah, I'm. I, I well, I wanted to steal it from you. Most. You did. You totally stole it from me. <laughs> I almost put it number one, but I I I, I like Days of Confused better, so that was my first choice. All right, number two for me. Then I'm gonna stick with John Hughes. I'm going the day we all wanted to have when we were in high school. Okay, I know what you're going. going Damn it. 1986, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, that's that was on my list as well. Damn it, God. Every, damn it! Everybody wanted to be Matthew Broderick. Everybody mm -hmm. wanted to have that epic day. Nothing went wrong for this man. Even even the whole car thing when they put all the miles on uh, Cameron's car. Yep. it still doesn't go bad for Matthew Broderick. Cameron gets it up the butt, but yeah. uh, Matthew Broderick's fine. It just accidentally falls out of that, you know. <laughs> Like, garage. He did kick it several times as it was up on the on the jack. Yeah, I guess it was kind of his fault, but yeah, it was no, that, ah, oh, man, I feel like I should have picked that as my number one pick, man. All right. I, no, I chose the right one. Breakfast Club no, was the right pick for me. It's a good choice. It was the right pick for me. Uh, no, I like this one. Now, here, I'm gonna, for my second choice today, 
I'm going to squarely kick you in the nuts. <laughs> uh, because although not a lot of time was spent in high school, I guess it was in, in this first film, um, I'm taking Back to the Future. Oh, you son of I a... Know. I, I know. What? One of Cotter's favorite films growing up. I'm taking Back to the Future. You want me to pull the knife out of my back now? <laughs> no, you can do it later. <laughs> uh, oh. Obviously, Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Crispin Glover, Leah Thompson. I mean, this film was is one of Cotter's favorites, and I can't believe I got it. And uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have the love that Cotter has for it. He is emotionally broken right now. If you're watching the live stream, this guy is be besides himself. <laughs> I thought I was just going to put this one in on the yeah, back. And I thought you were going to get this as a four. You were never going to pick this movie. I thought I had this one. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's yeah. gutting. I'm telling you, it feels really good right now. Gutting. <laughs> All right, we've got our second half of our Mount Rushmore of the best high school movies ever. What makes your list? You can text us, 800-394-1061. You can also comment on the chat. Here's Fozzie. It's Sane, Cotter, and Marshall Show. Rock 1061. Speaking of uh, congrats to Fozzie and uh, Chris Jericho, I think he's almost about to uh, break into the top 10 with Sane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's. I mean, next to Judas, it's uh, the second best song I think they've done. I mean, honestly, I think it, I think it's a good song. I can't believe you picked that. I really, you are. A, <laughs> I, just, I couldn't let you have it. I, you are an a. You talk about Back to the Future like it's a fucking Picasso up on the wall. Man. It is. It's your fault for not choosing it. I didn't think. I, I thought I had time. I wanted. I honestly thought I didn't know you're going to choose Days and Confused because I was going to pick that as my one. Right. Oh, okay. So immediately I was like Breakfast Club. Me personally, I love the Breakfast yeah, it's Club. Yeah, great movie. So I had to choose that. And then when you went Ferris Bueller's, that was my two. Okay. So I a retaliatory, <laughs> in a very ret- a classic John Marshall way, I went right. after a, one of your favorite movies. So I, I'm taking it back to the future one. Yeah, I mean, because I didn't feel bad not putting it in my top two. Because, I mean, I like it as a movie better than Ferris Bueller and Days Confused. But I was like, I was being a little bit more pure with the theme of high school movies. I'm like, it's high school. You get both, you know, the 80s and the 50s. So it's definitely a high school movie. But I think these other two fit the mold a little bit more. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was... Definitely on my list. <laughs> Dan, Dan goes, I'm too young. No, you're not, Dan. You just, you're not young. You just need an education, my friend. Go uh, This weekend, go watch some of those films. I'm only 21. <laughs> <laughs> he just got out of high school. He's like, I just lived it. Yeah, you did just live it, man. Uh, American Pie. American Pie is such a good movie, man. It's one, and I think it's, it's that type of movie and, you know, like uh, 16 Candles and some of these other movies you couldn't make now. You yeah. couldn't release an American Pie now. You couldn't release. There are some questionable elements. Oh, you in, could. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's some. I think there is some questionable thing. You just have to change some stuff. Just say it. There's some pussies out. There. <laughs> no, and I mean, well, it's you know, it's the same thing with Breakfast Club. And not Breakfast Club. I'm sorry. I think that one's okay. I think uh, Sixteen Candles. You know, there's there's yeah. several characters that you probably aren't going to do now. Mm-hmm. You know, you couldn't get away with. And I get. Uh, Tony says Clueless would be on her Mount Rushmore. It's a good movie, man. I, I definitely like that movie. Starring the uh, the age-defying Paul Rudd. I, he looks the same. Looks the damn same, man. He's got like one line in his forehead. We're, he, we're going to learn, you know, 300 years from now when he finally dies, uh, that he had a deal with the devil. I, I think he's honestly just a vampire. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm I'm calling an audible. I'm calling an audible. I oh, had are a, you? Yeah, I had one. Like I said, there was there was one that had a special place in my heart, and I felt I needed to put it on the list because of that. But I, I'm not going to. I'm crossing it off. I'm uh, not gonna make the cut. I think I know what my next two picks are. They're movies you'd never choose, so I don't have to worry about it. Unless you choose one of mine again. I, I personally felt like Ferris Bueller was mine, so uh, fair, I, I'll go after I'll go after those balls of yours. <laughs> Ferris Bueller is, I mean, it's everybody wanted to have that day, man. It's such a good movie. <laughs> Dan goes, uh, high school. I loved it. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> trust me, it gets better. Does it? I mean, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it totally does. Trust me, it does. Uh, Tony says, everything from John Hughes, though, makes my list. Yeah, John yeah. Hughes had a... I love his stuff, man. Dude was... I mean, like, it's unbelievable. You look... You look at like guys who who possibly cut a deal with the devil. John Hughes, he had the string of some of the best movies, and then the devil collected and killed him early. So yeah, I guess Jesus, man. Well, he, he died. You didn't, way bring, too, you didn't really need to bring that up. He died way too soon. All right, guys, be right back.
putting together the Mount Rushmore of the best high school movies ever. One, I went Days Confused. Two, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, Marshall won Breakfast Club. Two, Right in My Nuts. <laughs> Selected Back to the Future. Well, I was going to say, that's not the name of the movie. It's, it's called Back to the Future. <laughs> right to My Nuts is not a film that I've seen. Uh, it's really good. Uh, name me your sex tape. Uh, it's, it's quality, quality work. <laughs> um, so uh, Back to the Future was my next choice, man. Yep. I still, he did me dirty. Um, all right, where do I go? Okay. Name your sex tape, did me dirty. I, I'm going to go, uh, this is the newest one on the list. Okay. I, and I thought about putting American Pie in, in, in one of these spots because I really like that movie. Oh, I, yeah. I can go back and watch it. But there was something about this movie that I think ekes, uh, ekes American Pie off the list. I'm going 2007. I'm going super bad. Ah, that was on my list. I recently rewatched it. I forgot how good that movie was. Um, it, I'm, I'm iffy on Jonah Hill as an actor. You know, I, I, he's not, I mean, he's Oscar nominated. He's not bad. He's a I, great actor. I just, I'm not a big fan of his necessarily. He is great in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with Michael Sarah. Questionable, you know. Once again, though, perfect for this movie. Yeah, they're uh, McLovin. I mean, this. Oh movie, yes, this movie gave us McLovin. They uh, got you know blood on their pants. They stole <laughs> beer in uh, dishwasher soap bottles. I yes. mean, they got into fights. I mean, this was a a, a perfect perfect film. That's a great choice uh, coming at number three on your Mount Rushmore. Once again, we're doing the Mount Rushmore of high school movies. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go darker here, Cotter. Okay. I'm gonna go dark. I'm gonna choose. Hmm. Yeah, I, I saw this one a lot more. I'm going to choose it. 2001's Donnie Darko. Oh! With uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal, Jenna Malone, Drew Barrymore, James Duvall. Uh, the very first movie from Richard Kelly. Donnie, Donnie Darko was such a weird movie about time travel. And there was a bunny, and things were a jet plane engine fell down and killed some people. And there was the girl who said, shut up! And there was <laughs> so much stuff going on in that film, and the soundtrack was an 80s-based music. Like, yeah. It just hit. I just love Donnie Darko. I, 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 It's one of those movies, if you don't actually want to try mushrooms, but want to know what it's like, oh, you just watch that movie. Yeah. I met someone who did mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I've seen it, you know, a handful of times. It's so, so weird, but I mean, it, it's so good. I, I'll watch it every time yeah, I see it. That is a solid choice. All right. I got one more to go. This, this is tough. Cause once again, so many, I could pick 16 candles. I mean, John Hughes, uh, fantastic. Uh, the one that I had initially on my list that I, I'm getting rid of cause it was just too emotional, uh, emotional pick was Grease. Grease got me in the wow. theater. It got me in the theater. It, it was it was a, it was a big part of uh, growing up. But I'm not going to put it on my list. Get you emotional thinking about those high school girls. Huh? <laughs> they were like 37 yeah. at the time those, playing those, those summer nights. <laughs> 37, <laughs> uh, way legal. Um, all right, number four on my list. I'm going 1982. I'm going Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. Sean Penn, Judge Reinhold, Jennifer Jason Lee, and then maybe one of the best. Boob shots in the history of film. Phoebe Cates getting out of that pool. Oh, every time. Wow, that was that was back in the days when Cotter every had time. to hit, hit the pause button on the VCR, uh, but then he had to rewind it because uh, he, he missed it. <laughs> then he had to rewind, <laughs> rewind it, it again, again and then hit and pause it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, that's an okay choice. I don't I don't love okay it. Choice. I don't. I mean, fast, fast Times at Ridgemont High. I mean, it's Dude, okay. it's a classic. It's okay. The, the soundtrack is great. You got yeah. Sammy Hagar. I mean. So good. Uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, moving into my final pick, um, I wanted to really dive deep. I didn't want to go traditional high school movies. And once again, I could have chose everything from 21 Jump Street uh, to Easy A to uh, what else? Dead Poet Society, Mean Girls, Heathers. I could have gone Heathers is great. Napoleon Dynamite. But, Cotter, I'm going to go. You never would have thought of this film, but I did. X-Men 2. That's right. Okay. Xavier's School for the Gifted was highlighted quite a bit in okay. X-Men 2. And honestly, the best X-Men movie ever released back in 2003. Uh, still holding a very high score on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going X-Men 2. I know an odd choice, no. but I'm going there. I'm I like doing it. it. I like it. An outside of the box uh, pick, but definitely uh, fits into it. I mean, it's, it's a high school for... For the gifted, for yeah. the mutants. You got Wolverine just jumping around, being a psychopath. You know, <laughs> uh, he finds out that he was pretty much just an experiment. I mean, uh, any honorable mentions that you want to hit up while uh, we're uh, wrapping up Mount Rushmore today? Uh, like I said, I mean, uh, 16 Candles, you know, uh, Grease, 
uh, was one that I, say anything. Uh, say anything. You know what? That it, it is a good movie. Oh, one I didn't even think of until now. Ah, Better Off Dead. Better Off. Oh, okay. What was I thinking? Carrie, Goonies. How about that? Uh, Heather's we brought up. How about Spider-Man Homecoming? People, for some reason, put that on their list. Okay, here. I get that. Uh, Risky Business. Yeah, uh, Risky Business was good. Election, Hairspray, Hoosiers, Rushmore. Yeah, all of those. <laughs> uh, I, a solid list uh, on both parts. Uh, Someone said Twilight? No, no, no. Get out of here. Um, a fan from the show. <laughs> get us up with your list now. You can text it in. You can also comment on the chat, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Coming up next, Hefe 2. I think maybe one of the toughest choices in his music picking career. Oh. Uh, we got Volbeat, their latest song, Shotgun Blues. The other choice, just got it, dropped at midnight. How fitting. New stuff from Ghost called Hunter's Moon. FA2, the new music beta fish coming up next. Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1061. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> Uh, yes, happy birthday to my wife, who's on yeah. the uh, chat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Um, all right. What else do, makes the list that we missed out? I think some people dropped some lists. Chris says, Ferris Bueller, Friday Night Lights, Super Bad, American Pie. Uh, Red had a list, too. Oh, Goonies, Ferris Bueller, Breakfast Club, Carrie. Yeah, I almost put Carrie on my list in place of Donnie Darko. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I just, I've seen Donnie Darko so many more times than, uh, than them. Yeah, Donnie Darko, I mean, it's one of those movies, it's like, I just never got around to watching it, and then when I did, you're like, this is such a mind F. Oh, it completely is. You have to watch Donnie Darko multiple times uh -huh. to, like, even get an idea of yeah. what the hell is happening. 100%. But it's, I mean, it's so good, and it has such a vibe to the film that yes. it's, it's so unique and different. 100%. All right, so our final Mount Rushmore's, Cotter, yours was Dazed and Confused, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Super Bad. And Fast Times Richmond Ridgemont High. Yep. You're, you're pretty much, you were the 80s through like 1992 <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, I went Breakfast Club. Yep. Back to the Future to Mother F you. Donnie Darko. Oh, bitch. And then I went X-Men 2. Yeah. I wanted to think outside the box. It wasn't on any list I saw, but I was like, man, that movie just hit growing up. Yeah. No, that's a good call. Uh, somebody texted in their list. I don't have their name. One Dead Poet Society. Two school ties. That's a that's a God. I, I think that's the one. Like a young Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, a bunch of those kids in it. Uh, three didn't think of this one, but a great choice. Scream. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. Then uh, four American Pie. Not a fan, but respect the significance. The significance of humping a pie. <laughs> the significance. Uh, school ties had Brendan Fraser, Matt Damon, Chris O'Donnell, Ben Affleck, uh, Amy Locan. You notice her if you saw a picture of her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I watched that back in the day. I've seen it like once. It made $14 million yeah. total. I saw it on VHS. S set in the 1950s. Yep. It was like at a private school or something like the military school or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Charles goes, just thought of some more high school movies. Anything with Tracy Lords. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We can't talk about that. Illegal. 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 Uh, <laughs> Stand by me. The Lost Boys. That's good. Oh yeah, I, I don't really consider that Lost Boys. I mean, there is that is that a high school movie? I don't think it counts because they never went to high school. They <laughs> it, it was summer vacation, right? Yeah, it, it was during have, summer yeah. vacation. That might have been disqualified. <laughs> uh, Stand by me. I don't remember Stand by me. Really? Stand by me. Which one was that? That's oh, the, so there were train tracks looking, looking the for the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I think they were before. Were they high school? Junior high. They might have been junior high in that one. Junior high. Yeah. But it's, uh, dude, I, it's that's. Like, my two favorite Stephen King movies are his non-horror movies. Yeah. Stand By Me and Shawshank. Uh, it, was it was it based in school? A little bit? A little bit? Mostly it was just them yeah. on summer break, once again. Uh, Dan says Slender Man. I don't think I ever saw Slender Man. I know it came out sort of recently. In the last few years. Uh, Max says Breakfast Club for the win. Oh, shit. Wanda says Boys in the Hood. Oh, yep. It's a good call. Uh, Breakfast Club. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I still say Breakfast Club is like the measuring stick. I mean, that was, uh, he released Pretty in Pink first, which I think is his worst of his high school movies, in my opinion. Yeah. I know a lot of people really like it. But then when Breakfast Club came out, to me, it was just like kids were, and I mean, I don't know the ages of them at the time, if they were legitimately in high school or not, or around that age. To me, it, it showed kids could be. Uh, high schoolers could be taken a little bit more seriously and not just goofy, stupid high school kids. 
but while being goofy, stupid high school kids at the same time. All right, guys, got Hefe coming up next. He's going to choose some new music for us in between. Brand new stuff from Volbeat called Shotgun Blues and Ghost. They're back. Uh, they're going to be on the new Halloween soundtrack, a uh, new song called Hunter's Moon. Uh, after that, we're going to quiz Cotter in the face. Cotter, your quiz today. Let me pop it up real quick. Your quiz today is going to be Jeopardy Rock Band Trivia. Okay. All you need to do is answer these complete softball Jeopardy questions, but the catch is you have to answer the questions like you were on Jeopardy okay. and guess its correct category price to get full credit. So you get oh. you get half a point okay. for every easy question. Once again, these are complete softball <laughs> Jeopardy questions. Like they're stupid easy, okay. but to make it a little bit more difficult right. to get that full point, you have to tell me uh, what the category value was. Now I'll let you know whether it was. Uh, uh, the over under on the a thousands because what is it? What do they call that? Double Jeopardy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When they go over a thousand, a uh, thousand, they bucks. like double the price. Yeah, right. So, uh, I'll let you know whether it's uh, above or below double Jeopardy. Now, just so you know, there's only eight questions, uh, and you're gonna have two double Jeopardy questions in today's game. Two double Jeopardy questions. Right. Okay. Uh, have a good day, Tony. See you later, Tony. My wife said I can either get the sweatpants or hoodie, but not both. <laughs> what the? Hey, 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 Sean. Grown-ass man. You make your own decisions. You get both. You get both. What, are you going to walk around with a pair of jean shorts on with a meat-smelling hoodie? You can't. You got to have the whole outfit. Tell her it's for your birthday next year. <laughs> Tell her it's for your Christmas this year. Make some sacrifices. Get that whole damn outfit. <laughs> Can't just walk around the internet being called horny for smoked meats, only smelling like half of smoked meats. That's ridiculous. <laughs> smell like half of smoked meats. That's that's you know what? That's the dumbest thing I heard all day. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm offended your wife said that. No more bird trivia for her. Uh, three minutes, guys. Three minutes. All right, let's check in on Hefe. He was just uh, chilling. I gave him some extra food this morning because he's been a good boy. Also, it's hard to not be a good boy when you're a fish. All right, he's moving around. Uh, obviously, if you could, make sure to feed half a the new music beta fish yep, tomorrow. I will. I give them uh, three little pellets. Okay. Uh, I like to put them in front of them. If you just throw them at the back, sometimes the filter will make it like, um, swish around and right. shoot them towards the bottom. Uh, just, you know, give them a little tap Right. Drop them right in front of them. But he's been vicious with food. Like, he's come up, like, real hard on Really? Me. Like, yeah, he was going to bite me or something. Take it out of your hand. Yeah. Um, so, you're we just talking Jake Gyllenhaal, obviously, because of Donnie Darko. So, he was on, where was he on lately? It was on a Tonight Show, and he was talking about his dog. Um, he got his dog fixed, but then he had uh, fake, fake dog testicles for his dog. So, he, I guess, what? felt like he was still... Yeah. Really? Yeah. You can supposedly get them for any pet that gets neutered. Dogs, cats, horses, bulls. What are the benefits of putting in fake testicles in your dog? I don't know. Nudicles is what they're called. <laughs> what? Neutered testicles. Nudicles. That's not real. That's, I'm clicking on the Nudicles website now. How there much is a, how much is a set of fake dog testicles? Got? Uh, they've got a link to the uh, Jake Gyllenhaal story straight up front. They just look like little... Plastic jelly beans, I guess. Uh, let's see. We can get a price here. Uh, click the logos for more information. Nudicles. Yeah, I want to know more information. Advancing pet technology since 1995. They all got right. like external ear strip. They've got all kinds of stuff. It's not all just right, tell nudicles. Me, tell me the benefits of what fake balls in a dog does. Uh, began in 1995 with patented nudicles, testicle implanta uh, implantation for pets, helping neutered, hesitant pet owners overcome the trauma of altering and allowing their beloved pet to retain its natural look and self-esteem. So it's ju it's just for the it's just for the human. Dogs don't give it s. Kind of what it sounds like. Proudly crafted in the United States for veterans and pet owners worldwide. Wait, wait for veterans, vet owners, oh, vet veterinarians, veterinarian. Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, like, why are we giving our veterans fake yeah. balls? Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't give a price. Don't know. I, I, but there you go. Fake, I, I got a fake testicle. I have dogs. to know about this. 
All right, 30 seconds away from Hefe 2, the new music beta fish. How much are fake dog balls? <laughs> you just Googled that. Test testicles. Let's go testicles. We'll go. Hey, how about this? Okay, I found it. I found it. Okay, hold that thought. We got 15 seconds. Damn it. We'll be right back. Good morning. Thank you for hanging out on air and on the stream. It is time for Hefe 2, the new music beta fish, to select a new song for us this morning. And I'm excited about today's choices. I think it may be the toughest choices Hefe has ever had. I, I, this would be difficult for me to choose. So I don't know how our uh, beta fish is going to pull it off. Uh, here are the choices. Number one. We got brand new stuff from Volbeat. They got a new album, Servant of the Mind, coming out December 3rd. The new single is Shotgun Blues. You know I like that band, man. I like that band a lot. That's a fun song. I like it. All right, number two. Uh, a band that uh, Volbeat's going out on tour with in 2022, Ghost. It's the first new song from them in two years, and it's going to be featured in the brand new Halloween movie, Halloween Kills. The song is called Hunter's Moon. ha. <laughs> I love Ghost, man. That's a fun song right there. I love his voice, man. It's so good. All right, so let's go ahead and, and put Hefe to work. Hefe, he was ready to get to work, then he went back to take a nap. <laughs> Hefe, you got to get up. So we literally ask our fish to work one day a week. That's one. It. All right, so Hefe, here's the deal. On the left-hand side of the tank, you have Volbeat. On the right-hand side of the tank, you've got Ghost. Just choose one. You can go back to sleep, all right? Come on, bud. All right, here we go. Hefe has a signal. He's right in the middle of the tank. He's immediately going to the right-hand side, floating to the right-hand side. Now back to the middle, guys. Oh, vicious That's, turns. He's told you a tough he's choice. angsty. Yep, and he's going right-hand side today, Cotter. We're going ghost. Brand new stuff. All right, this is off of uh, the new soundtrack for the new Halloween movie, Halloween Kills. First new song from Ghost in two years. Low Country, Coastal Empire premiere. This is Hunter's Moon. Thank you, FA2. Rock 106.1. All right, Hefe picking new music. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. A little angsty this morning, Hefe. I literally said it's time to work, and he went, went <laughs> go back to sleep on top of the, to uh, the, the totem guy. He's like, eh, I work when I work. All right, so the answer to the average oh, yeah. cost of a pair of fake, <laughs> of fake dog testicles. Yes. $310, though some cost a lot more. When it comes to different animals, you could put fake testicles in an elephant. $2,800 for the watermelon size custom set Thank you. of elephant testicles. That was going to be the next question. How big are elephant balls? Nudicles are silicone implants for male dogs to replace testicles after neutering. <laughs> Who's buying fake elephant testicles? I mean, I get it. If you want to, you want your dog to, you know, feel like a man, I guess. But who's out there buying elephant testicles? Well, apparently, Nudicles, uh, according to Nudicles.com, can cost as low as $160 a pair. Got a good insurance plan. So, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. So, just in case you're, uh, you're wondering, in case you want to uh, help your pet get over the trauma of having their real balls caught out and then surgically implanted fake balls, Nudicles is an option for that. I uh, got uh, another... Uh, Text, high school movie, Mount Rushmore, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Phoebe Cates, mic drop. <laughs> yeah. Did you just text yourself that? Maybe. Did, we, did you text that? I just texted <laughs> that in. Yeah. You know. Uh, let's see. Sean says my beta likes to let the food soak until it starts to sink. Then he attacks as if it's uh, falling. He's an odd one. Yeah, uh, Hefe, yeah, the, the tank has gotten a little bit, a little bit of algae around the uh, lower rim, which... We haven't had in quite some time ever since we got the snails. The rest of the tank looks good, and the 
uh, SpongeBob's house actually looks pretty good too. So, um, so I do have the Jeopardy bed in there. Of course, if you want to use it, everything comes off the same pot. So it's like the correct and wrong are at a lower volume. So if you just want the correct and wrong, we could do that. If you want the Jeopardy theme, we got that in there just for the for the bit today. Yeah. So so what would I have to do? do I just... You just we would just hit the Jeopardy theme, and I, I would have to keep it down a little lower, which means when you it's the same thing that happened when we did it with your gotcha. yours, okay. the correct and wrong were just a little bit lower volume than they normally yeah, would that's be. Yeah, fine. Because of uh, the Jeopardy. All right, guys, about to uh, jump into Quizzed in the Face here in about uh, 30 seconds. <clears throat> Once again, we're just going to do four and four today. All right, guys, be right back. It is time for me to get quizzed in the face. Uh, it's Jeopardy related, like uh, my questions were on Tuesday for Marshall. Uh, some of the easiest questions ever asked in the history of Jeopardy. Uh, but for this quiz, they are music related Jeopardy questions. Right. This is rock band Jeopardy questions. Questions that were actually asked on Jeopardy about rock bands that you all know very, very well. So, Cotter. All you need to do is answer these complete softball Jeopardy questions today. But the catch is you have to answer the question like, yeah. like you were on Jeopardy, but you only get half a point for getting it correct. The second half of the point, yeah. you have to guess the dollar amount that it was uh, that it was set at. So like uh, some questions are 200, 400, right. 600, 800. Now, sometimes there's some double Jeopardy questions. Uh, I'll let you know when it is a double Jeopardy question. Okay. Which is obviously the uh, same dollar amount, just a thousand dollars put in front of it. Okay, I am. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just literally going to Google Jeopardy question values just so I have it in front of me. <laughs> I'm not cheating. I just okay. Want... All right. All right. So let's go ahead and begin once again quizzing Cotter in the face today with some very easy rock band Jeopardy questions. Cotter, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. Question number one. In 2013, this. Enter Sandman, metal band, became the first to perform on all seven continents when it played at an Antarctic base. Uh, who is Metallica? Cotter, that is half a point. Correct. Okay. All right. But for the second half of the point, it is regular Jeopardy, not double Jeopardy. What is the point value of that question? I mean, that one seems easy even for somebody who's not... Uh, huge metallic. Man, this is where it gets tough. Um, is it valued at 400? Cotter. 400. That, that is also correct. Whoa. Congratulations. Absolutely slaying the very beginning of Rock Band Jeopardy. We're going in with Cotter. Uh, we'll do four questions on the first half, Cotter. Second question. In 2019, this hard rock band led by Maynard James Keenan. Released his first album in 13 years, and it went to number one. Uh, who is Tool? Cotter. Absolutely. Okay. 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 All right. So that's half a point. For the other half of the point, what was the dollar of value associated with that question? It is just regular Jeopardy values. Um. Wow. That's a that's a good one because I think that one might be a little bit more obscure, not as mainstream. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 600. Cotter. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. Kind of okay. surprised. I'm Are you sure right you're now. not Googling that stuff? I, here's all I'm looking at right now. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Question number oh, three. Gene Simmons says it takes him two hours to get into his makeup for this band. He said Paul Stanley takes 45 minutes, but has less to do. Uh, who is Kiss? That is. Who is Kiss? Obviously correct. For the second half of the point, what is the dollar value regular Jeopardy? That's got to be 200. 200. It's, it's an easy question. Cotter? Oh. That is completely wrong. They put that one in at 400. 400. It's really? All right, Cotter, you okay. currently have two and a half points All right. on the first half of Rock Band Jeopardy. One more, then we'll go to break. Question number four. American Idiot made its way to Broadway six years after this pop punk band released the album in 2004. Uh, Marshall, who is uh, Green Day? Cotter. 100% correct. But for the second half of your points, Cotter. What are we giving the point value for that question? 
See, these are all so easy. I, I have a hard time going too high on the point value. I'm going to say that is valued at, I want to say, I'm going to say 400, and I hate my choice, but 400. You, I hate it too, because that is 100% incorrect. They put that at an $800 value. Come on. All right, Cotter, three out of four currently on the first half of Rock Band Jeopardy. Got another four questions for you coming up here in just a few. All right, more quizzed in the face next, Cotter and Marshall Show, Rock 1061. All right, guys. Yeah, the value, that's so weird. Because, I mean, to me, it's like Green Day, out of all the bands you asked about, probably the most mainstream and current. So, I mean, why mm-hmm. that is an $800 question, <laughs> kind of mind-blowing. I, I don't know either, man. All right, so three out of four, not too bad. And we're, you know, we're kind of splitting up the questions there, so a little bit more difficult. But uh, uh, in commercial break right now here on Rock 1061, if you listen locally. Uh, after that, we're going to go to the second half of Quiz in the Face. Then we talk to the big guy, Frank Sulkowski. Uh, three big, big games this weekend. I'm excited to watch. Uh, first one we're going to talk about is obviously the Falcons. They're playing uh, at home versus the Redskins. Let me break uh, this open real quick. Yep, uh, playing at home against the uh, uh, Redskins. That's the 1 o'clock game. Right. Then we'll ask the big guy about the Cardinals and the Rams. These are This is the only undefeated uh Game of the week. So Cardinals 3-0, Rams 3-0. Four o'clock game. That's going to be a really fun one to watch. And then we'll ask him about Monday Night Football. Uh, Battle of Vegas versus L.A. Raiders and Chargers, Monday Night Football. Both teams are really good. Uh, So another great game. We'll get uh, big guys' opinions on who's going to take home the win from those. And then once again, Cotter and I are off the uh, stream tomorrow. We'll be playing a best of. Uh, Going to be uh, taken off for a few days. We'll be back on Monday. My fl- right. And just a heads up, my flight home Sunday, I don't get home to like 5-ish. So okay. just a heads up there. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. try to put together some stuff while I'm out. Sure. But uh, Monday may need to be a little bit more uh, you intensive when it comes to yeah. uh, setting it up. No worries. Um, we're going to come right out of commercials. Okay. Uh, show's flown by today, guys. Uh, Lane says Draft House update. They are changing the Flip Cup event to Saturday. Oh, bummer. Which uh, Draft House? Uh, there's a draft room, and there's the Savannah Tap House. <laughs> What's the, Where's the Draft House? Uh, I don't think I'll be able to make a Saturday event. Bummer. Uh, we're going, that's when we go to Jacksonville. Check out Hamilton. Oh, is, is this weekend it Hamilton is weekend? this weekend. Or I would be going to Austin this weekend. Yep. Uh, if anyone's bored tonight, we're going to be, uh, oh, the Berwick. You're talking about the uh, draft room in Berwick. Gotcha. Yeah, Saturday, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. Depends on what time it starts. I don't know. Maybe the wife and I get home from Jacksonville and we're feeling frisky. Yeah. And not in the sex way. Uh, Never in the sex way. It's just once a year. Uh, <laughs> draft room at Berwick uh, is where I'm going to be tonight, guys, down in Berwick, uh, hosting bingo. So if you guys want to come out, 7 o'clock tonight, I'll be hosting bingo. Uh, I got 10 games of bingo-ish. It's been fluctuating ever since football started. I think we played uh, seven games two weeks ago and played nine games last week. So Okay. But uh, still uh, giving away all sorts of fun stuff. $50 gift card is the last game of the night. So once again, uh, come on out to Draft Room at Berwick. I'm going to be out there starting at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, if you want to get out of the house, eat some food, drink some beers, watch some football, and play some bingo. Nice. Absolutely free to play. All right, we've got a little over a minute. Or we're back into quizzed in the face. Mm-hmm. Elaine says they're starting about three thirty, four o'clock after the game. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely won't be back. I think uh, the show. I think we go to a two o'clock show. Are you doing the uh, the matinee the of matin- Hamilton? The matinee. Figured it's always nice because you can go down for lunch, watch mm-hmm. the matinee. You're home by like seven. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right, guys, we're at what minute away? Yeah, I got about a minute. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Red said, anyone using the Facebook stream, your comments fade away after a few seconds. 
I know. Facebook's stupid. But thanks for letting us be on Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. All right, 15 seconds back at it. Final break of the hour, head into the last hour of the show for the week. All right, here we go. Got a little quizzed in the face action going on right now. Uh, interesting round. It is a uh, Jeopardy themed round with uh, metal or rock band questions. But you've kind of upped it a little bit to make it a little bit more difficult, Marshall. That is correct. So today we're just doing some simple rock band Jeopardy questions. These are questions that actually have appeared on the show. Where is my cursor here? Sorry, I'm blind. I can't see anything <laughs> from the other side. Oh, there it is. Uh, once again, we were asking you questions that were actually asked on the show. All you need to do is answer them like you're on Jeopardy, and they're absolutely softball questions. So uh, we're only giving you half a point if you get them correct. We'll give you another half a point if you can actually guess the dollar amount that they were uh, they were given uh, on the show for. Now, there is two double Jeopardy questions. I'll let you know which ones they are okay. uh, coming up here on the second half of the game. Are you ready, sir? Let's do this. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Question number five. Song by Black Sabbath. Movie, Tony Stark weaponizes an armored suit. Uh, what is Iron Man? Cotter, that is correct. Now, let's go ahead and get that other half of the point for you. What is the dollar value associated with that question? Once again, that is a softball question for anybody. $200. $200. Got her? 100%. Okay. Nailed that as well. All right, you're currently up to four out of... Five-ish uh, points, at least. So let's continue uh, moving on. Question number six. An official Pearl Jam website informs us this singer likes card tricks and the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> he likes card tricks? <laughs> Apparently. I'm going to learn a card trick if I'm ever going to meet. Who is Eddie Vedder? Yeah, that is correct. All right. Now for the dollar value. Cotter, what do you associate dollar value with that question? I'm going to say that the Jeopardy producers thought that one was harder than necessary. I'm going to say it was valued at $600. You're a Jeopardy aficionado because <laughs> that is correct as well. Nice. Doing very, very well, Cotter. Got two more questions for you. Both these questions have a Jeopardy uh, double value to them. Okay, okay. So just a like heads it. up there. Question number seven. For a 2005 reality TV show, this Motley Crue drummer signed up for classes at the University of Nebraska. Really? I did Okay, who's Tommy Lee? That is correct. You don't remember that? No. Dude, I love that show. I didn't remember that at all. All right. Oh, so this is double Jeopardy. This is double Jeopardy value. Okay. What, what price did it come in at to get the full point value? 1600 Oh, ah. Cotter. Sorry about that. No, 1200 Okay. 1200 for Deber double Jeopardy value. All right, one more question. Wrapping up Quiz in the Face today. It is rock band Jeopardy, obviously themed. Last question. Despite losing an arm, <laughs> Rick Allen continues to drum for this hard rock group. I ain't going to lie. I sweated it out a little bit. You're going to ask me to give his name. And I'm like, I don't know what the guy's <laughs> name is. Uh, who is Def Leppard, Marshall? Uh, that is... Correct, my friend. Your last chance at getting any sort of points is with this question right here. What is the double jeopardy value of that question? Uh, obviously not his arms. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say I'm gonna, it's 16. I'm going to stick with 1,600. Cotter? Not today. Uh, Just a flat $1,000. Oh, I okay. guess that is a double jeopardy, is it? 1,000? Does it go up? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm terrible at Jeopardy. Thousand is a regular. Oh, uh, okay. I would have got it wrong. Yeah, you anyway. got it wrong anyway. Yes, for you. Four, five, six. You got six out of eight today. Not too shabby. I'll take that. I'll take that. All right. We're back with some more quiz in the face next week. Coming up next, we're going to be talking to the big guy after nine o'clock so we can break down another weekend in the NFL. It's up next, Cotter and Marshall Show, Rock 1061. Whoops, sorry about that. I thought uh, $1,000 for some reason was double jeopardy. It's all good. I thought everything with four numbers was double jeopardy. Like I said, it would have been wrong anyway. <laughs>
All right, guys. Uh, Connor, not too bad. Six out of eight today. Yeah, I did way better with guessing numbers. The yeah, numbers. Than I, I thought. was stunned. I was. <laughs> I did not. I thought. I thought you were cheating somehow. Yeah. Definitely not. Just I just had to see how many the numbers are actually there. Um, just so you know, I actually did. I, I was actually able to make two games. Uh, so this game will return. Okay. Uh, in uh, in a future episode of Quiz in the Face. I like it. Uh, see you later, Sean. Thanks for hanging out. Tommy Goes to College was that show. Yeah, don't, tell, you don't remember that? No. Dude, I love that show. I mean, he went yeah. To, he went to University of Nebraska. I lived there for a while. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Definitely not in 05, but pretty close. You were there oh. in 09? No, I moved here in 09. So it probably, oh, five, so I moved here in 09. I was in Illinois for two years. I was in, I mean, it was close. I mean, I was yeah. in Lincoln in 2006, 2005, 2006. Yeah. So it was close, give or take. Yeah, it was it was a ridiculously dumb show. No, it had to be 2006 because I turned 30 in Illinois. There you go. All right, guys, coming up next, we got the big guy, Frank Sukowski. He'll be joining us by phone. Uh, he'll be talking about, uh, well, some football games that we have coming up this week. The Falcons are going to be uh, playing, so we'll ask him uh, if they'll win. He somehow guessed that they would win last week, and he got it right. Because it's the big guy. Yeah. Chances, I mean, unless it's a complete no-brainer, and sometimes even when it is, uh, he's going to pick pick the Falcons. So I've heard some rumors. Speaking of NFL talk, okay, that if the Bears lose against the Lions the week this week, the Lions are zero and three, right? That the Chicago Bears will fire Matt Nagy. You think so? So I've never really rooted ever in my life for the Bears to lose ever any game, and I've watched so many Bears <laughs> games, guys. I'm kind of rooting for the Bears to lose. Why? Why? Why this game? Why not now? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, is this going to be a weekly thing now? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Thing is, how about this? I'm in Chicago. The Bears are playing at home. Oh, it's true. And I'm not going to the game. Yeah. I, I don't even want to. Yeah. yeah you're going <laughs> to a preseason NHL game instead. Yeah, I'm going to a preseason NHL game on Friday. I could stay. I could stay for an extra day. Yeah. Stay to watch the Bears. I didn't even want to. <laughs> That's how that's how bad my fandom has gotten. That's a yeah. I told my wife it was almost two or three years ago that I I just don't even want to buy any more Chicago Bears stuff. Like I'd buy like a jersey yeah. or like a hoodie or something. Yeah. Like I was like I'm done. I haven't bought anything in like three years. I'm like until they're good, until I know they're consistently good, I'm not going to support this effing team. I think that's fair. I got no issue with that. The only way I support them is by watching their stupid games, which I illegally stream uh, <laughs> each and every week. Um, also in the uh, 9 o'clock hour outside of Marshall's Music News, uh, the ratings or the uh, first reviews have come out for the new James Bond movie. So we'll go over what people are saying about the new Bond flick that's coming out on the uh, October 8th. I forgot how long we've been sitting on this movie, waiting for it to come out. Year and a half, right? I mean, it was, originally it was November of 19. Yeah, November of 19. So almost two years. Yeah. Holy S. Yeah. I mean, that was even pre-pandemic. I don't remember why they put it on hold. Was it not ready? Was something else coming out that weekend? Uh, I don't I don't remember. Yeah, I think they, they pushed it from November to April. For They had some reason yeah. behind it. And then, yeah, everything happened. The it just got happened, pushed yeah. back further and further. Two years. So, according to Tommy Lee Goes to College, uh, it is rated on IMDb at 4.9 out of 10. And it lasted one season. Tommy Lee goes to Nebraska College for a few weeks, takes classes, and lives in the dorms with a roommate. <laughs> That's the explanation of the show. How many episodes did they get out of that? Seven. They, they somehow got seven episodes out of that. Here's the cast to Tommy Lee Goes to College. Tommy Lee. Matt Ellis as his roommate. Natalie Reidman as the hot tutor. Tim Gay as a physics professor. Fran Kay as English professor. Butch Hug as assistant athletic director. <laughs> Caroline Barber as director of bands. Uh, Bula Bass as self. And Harvey Perlman as chancellor. <laughs> That's funny. It's awesome. They got him a hot tutor for... <laughs> 
Uh, Marshall, will you be watching the Soprano-based movie coming out? Also, Venom Carnage. Ooh, great questions. Uh, Sopranos, The Mini Saints of Newark. Uh, yeah, I definitely will be watching that. I think that comes out this weekend. Uh, Venom, the Venom movie, I would definitely want to see. Let there be carnage. Uh, I'm going to be out of town. That, that's the thing that kind of sucks. So um, I think I'm going to try to catch both those movies um, over the next week or so. But yes, to answer your question, 100%, I'll be watching both. Uh, Sherry goes, I think Tommy Lee, he wanted to finish his degree or something. Really? Well, he definitely didn't do it in seven episodes, did he? <laughs> I watched it and I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Uh, Sony put out a like three-minute teaser of an extended scene with Carnage kind of getting out of jail, how he kind of escapes. And it looks really, really cool. I'm excited to uh, check out that film uh, when it comes out, which is, I think, Friday. All right. Um, yeah, I won't be watching that. You didn't watch the first one. Didn't watch the first I didn't one. Didn't expect you to. Got no desire. I mean, I'm not. But you, a... what you will, will rewatch Quantum Leap and Rounders. Yeah, yeah. Because I know they're good. <laughs> um, Your comfort food of TV shows. <laughs> uh, I will. Um, I'm not a huge, like James Bond isn't like, oh, I got to go see James Bond. I'll mm -hmm. probably watch this just for the hell of it. Uh, I, I, it's, it's good. It's supposedly yeah. good. Yeah. I'm excited for Halloween Kills. That comes out on the 15th, uh, and it's coming to Peacock, so you can actually watch it at home. I, I kind of want to go to the theater to see it. I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe a Friday after work theater experience. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I know it's on Peacock, and I watch from the house, but I'm like, I don't know. I kind of want the big screen for that one, I think. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, check out that film, that film as well. And like pretty much from here until the end of the year, there is a movie. There's a reason to get out of your house damn near every weekend to go to the movies. So um, I'm going to fire up the delay, guys. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, I got a stupid injury report. Ah, our light's off again. Balls. Oh, the on-air light? Yeah. Oh, let me see. It was probably nope. yesterday when things... That's the phone. It was probably yesterday when things were set. Oh, no, wait. This is this. Let's see if this screws things up. <laughs> that should do it. Okay. That <laughs> should do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, sorry, stupid injury report. Uh, Brewers right hand pitcher. Hold on, getting his name. Devin Williams uh, gets mad, punches a wall, broke his hand. Uh, <laughs> the Brewers really good. They're actually going to make the playoffs this year, and uh, that guy's not. That guy's not going to be joining them. He's going to miss the postseason run because he got real mad and punched a wall. I haven't really been paying attention to baseball this year because of how bad the Cubs have sucked. Speaking of, yeah, we got to. I think we're both effed. Uh, Is it MI effed more? You're effed more. Yeah. You, you said 81 wins. I went lower with 78. Yeah, I could call. They're currently at 68. They hey, get 69. Come on. There was that brief week. We were good, yeah. There were, we were in first place. And, and we, we, and we had, traded everyone. Had that nice little run. Yep. First, you're like, oh my God, maybe, maybe something's going to happen. No, nothing happened. Uh, best team in baseball, the Giants. 104 wins. Uh, well, it's funny. The Los Angeles Dodgers are still favored to win the World Series, and they won't even win their own division. So weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, and then the effing Cardinals put together an epic, epic end of season run. Yeah, they they have made the wild card game at least they won like what seventeen in a row, eighteen in a row. I mean, some stupid number. Uh, well, technically, let's see. They've lost. They lost one, but yeah, they went like yeah. fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a stupid epic run, and it had to happen to the stupid. Cardinals. <laughs> We're fans. <laughs> uh, what do we got going on here? Uh, we've got about six minutes. Okay. So I'm going to call, call the big guy here yeah, in a minute. Call the big guy here in a second. Yeah, I mean, you got the Giants, Dodgers, Cardinals, Brewers, and they're, they're still waiting to see who's going to win out the East. It's probably going to be the Braves. Uh, they're, they've yeah. been on the hottest of hot streaks. Yeah, they've, they've won five in a row. They're 9-1 and one in their last 10. Yeah, I think the big guy said the magic number was one. 
yeah, they're they're doing very, very well. Then you got the White Sox. Uh, let's see, the White Sox, the Rays. They're the only two teams that have clinched in the uh, American League, really. And then uh, did you see the Rays, how uh, you know they clinch, and then they're going to debut a banner saying they're going to play half their games in Montreal next year. Wait, why are they playing half their games in Montreal? Because they nobody will come to their effing game. They average like nine thousand fans of this season. Oh, really? They had an ab- I mean, a thousand fans less than the Orioles. I mean, and they're a great team. They can't <laughs> draw for s. Now, when they clinched, they had like over twenty. But I mean, there were a couple games where they showed pictures of the stadium where they were saying the number was you know seven eight thousand. There was maybe a thousand. I mean, it was rough. Tropicana Field is one of the worst spots to go watch baseball. It's just it's a terrible stadium. Is it? No, yeah. I've never been. Isn't that where when didn't Jake go down there? Jake went down there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but no, they they're. I mean, nobody shows up. So yeah, I guess they're going to split half their time in Montreal. Makes sense. Hey, if people will go, man, I get it. Uh, all right, we're going to call the let's call the big guy. Yeah. Ray Sokowski. Hello. What's up, big guy? Morning, morning. Morning, Frank. So obviously, a lot's been going down this past. A lot's been going down this past week, Frank. Uh, first and foremost, give me your opinion, Gavin Adcock. What are we doing there? What's what's going on with that kid? <laughs> uh, I, I think he's trying to. I think he's trying to sell some country country <laughs> albums. Yeah. So, do you know what's you know, the I, what's the story? It, Why was he on top of the bus? Do you know the story? Uh, I mean, it was just, they were just trying to fire up the crowd, but, you know, uh, it, it's, you, you, you can't do it. <laughs> and so, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of frowned upon, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's crazy whenever they ride the buses into the stadium. I mean, it's, it's an old tradition, but not climbing on top of the bus, and catching beers and shotgunning them. Right. On a moving bus. That's that, that was new. So yeah, that wasn't. What got the coach fired? But it was the uh, the ball that broke the Cavs' back. So, do you think? Do you think Gavin is taking it personally? Like, oh man, I got the coach fired. No, no, I don't (laughs) think he's taking it personally. No, I I hope he's not. You know, but hey, you know, now we just wait and see if he if he gets to play at all this year. So, Uh, what what are the odds? You think he's probably not. I I think he will. I think maybe late in the season because he's a senior. So you. You don't want the guy just to have played his last game like that. So I don't know. I, it's going to be interesting to see how it all how it all goes down. Yeah, wow, crazy, crazy run of events there. I, I know you were over there covering, uh, you know, the post press conference. You know, when the when the coach was after he was let go, Coach Lunsford, uh, crazy stuff. I mean, do you think? I mean, what do you, what do you think happens to the rest of the season? Are we just going to kind of coast it and may win a game or two, and that's just kind of the end of it? Uh, you know, it's one of those things where now you find out. I mean, you know, all the, the, the same coaches except for the head coach are, are there, uh, all the same players. So now you just find out what they're made of. I mean, what, you know, you're playing for. I mean, here's the thing. There's still eight games left in the year. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you, you're only a quarter of the way through. So, I mean, you could technically still win the conference championship. You can still go to a bowl game. You, I mean, so there's still plenty to play for. So, uh, you know, we're we're going to find out. You know, what kind of statement that they, they want to make. It's it's just it's just crazy whenever you you get rid of a coach so early in the year. Uh, you know, but you know, drastic times call for drastic measures, and you know, it's been known that uh, that that seven wins and here and there they they want to be competing for championships in the, in the conference, and it just right. hasn't happened. So we'll see. Real real quickly, Frank, we're uh, we're going to go on in the air here in about ninety seconds. But real quickly, when you played football, obviously. Uh, when you played football, did you ever get on top of a bus and chug a beer? <laughs> I, I did not. Okay. No. Okay. No. Just clearing that no, up. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Did not. And if I even tried that stun back in the day, I, I probably wouldn't be here right now. So. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's just been a, it's just been a crazy week. I mean, it's you know, and that you know, when you have that kind of stuff happen, you know, on a Sunday and into Monday and. It just it just makes for a long week. Yeah. 
Uh, so, all right, got about 40. We're here plugging. <laughs> 45 <laughs> seconds. Uh, big guy of the games, uh, just in case Cotter didn't get him to you, obviously uh, yep. uh, Washington Falcons, Cardinals at Rams, Raiders yep. at Chargers. Yep, sounds cool, cool. good to me. Cool. All right, uh, we'll be right back. Uh, next time we talk, we'll be on the air. Sounds good. Good morning. Thank you for hanging out on air and on the stream. Cotter and Marshall show. Time to break down another weekend in the NFL. That means we're going to be joined by the big guy, Frank Slikowski from uh, WJCL 22. Frank, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Let's dive right in. Game number one. Let's talk Falcons Mm. against Washington. Did did I predict the Falcons win last week? You did, Frank. You did. You dang straight I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> I tell you, and, and what makes it extra sweet is when, uh, you know, a guy who, who I know real well uh, kicks the game-winning field goal in Young Way Kill, of course, a former Georgia Southern Eagle, and, and just a great story, and it, it was so good to see him finally get a walk-off win and to, to do it, you know, where he's from. He's from New Jersey, and yeah. so that was in the shadow of, of where he grew up. So that was awesome for that to happen, and a very big win for the Falcons because it proves that you can win, and, <laughs> and they beat, yeah, it, it's not, a, 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 you know, that, let's, let's be honest, the Giants aren't, are, aren't anything special. So, But a win is a win nevertheless, so it gives you a little bit of confidence, and, and now you go uh, against the Washington team, which, is a little bit better than the, than the Giants, so the competition's going to be amped up a little bit. But I can tell you this, uh, the Falcons are believing. Uh, I'm not saying that there's going to be a, a ticker tape parade at the end of the season, uh, but but they're going to win two in a row. They're going to beat Washington. Oh, all right. I kind of, you know what? I kind of like this pick. Washington does their defense is like second to last in the league. They're supposed to have one of the best defenses. I know this because I drafted them in my fancy football league, <laughs> and they've completely, you know, what the bed. So uh, it hasn't been great. Great first pick, uh, big guy. Let's move on to uh, another game that I think is possibly game of the week material. Uh, Four o'clock on Fox. You got the Arizona Cardinals three and zero versus the L.A. Rams, also three and zero. What do you say about this one? I, I do agree. I, I think this is the game of the week. I mean, and again, you know, being here on the East Coast, we, we, we may not be as savvy to the West Coast teams unless you're a fan of them. And, and I tell you what, there's something special being done in the desert for Arizona. Uh, the Rams, uh, this team is just built for this type run this year. I mean, you bring in Matt Stafford and, uh, you know, the guy can flat out play. There's a lot of talent there. Both three and zero. Oh. I just think the Rams are clicking too much and have too many weapons. I do think this is going to be a really good game, and I and I do think Arizona is definitely a, a team to be reckoned with and have a, you know show some respect for. Uh, I just think the Rams, you know, I, you know, coming off of a win uh, over Tampa like they did, I, I think this team is really starting to roll and, and could be uh, one of those uh, you know dark horses to. To, to make it to the Super Bowl. I mean, they have that type of talent, and Stafford is that type of quarterback where you get him a supporting cast. Uh, we're seeing what can happen. So give me the Rams in this one. Uh, quick question on this game. Uh, after the Rams do win, do you think Aaron Donald will get on top of the team bus and chug a beer? <laughs> uh, anything's possible okay. in today's climate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up with Monday Night Football Raiders uh, at Chargers. What is this one looking like? This is another good game, and of course, all eyes will, will be on on this matchup. Uh, somehow, so, some way, I don't know what's happened, but I, I've become a fan of the Raiders a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's I, I don't know if it's because you know they're 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 in Las Vegas. It's that, and they're the Raiders, and they're playing there. And <laughs> there's something very fun about that, and, and something naughty, you know, to be a Raiders fan again. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think I think this will be a really good matchup. 
I think the Raiders do, you know, play a little bit better at home. So on the road, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But let's be honest, this isn't like some big gigantic road trip. I think this is a, a pretty evenly matched game, but I, I do think the Raiders – uh, you know, are going to get the win in this one. And I, and I think the Raiders continue uh, to trend up as well. So I think, you know, with a new home in Vegas where people love them, uh, love, you know, love putting the mortgage, you know, betting the mortgage of their house on it and everything <laughs> else, <laughs> give, give, it, give it to the Raiders on a Monday night. Love it. All right, big guy, as always, thank you very much. Talk to you next week. Break down another weekend in the NFL. Coming up next, we're talking movie reviews for the latest James Bond flick. Avenge Sevenfold, Hail to the King, Rock 1 is 6 1. Hailing, hailing to our personal sports king, big guy Frank Zukowski. Frank, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, guys, appreciate y'all as always, and we'll talk to y'all next week. Right. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Thanks. All right, guys, have Bye. a good weekend. You too. I'm going to chuck some beers on top of bus <laughs> in, in honor of Frank this you, weekend. Give me a bus. <laughs> Give me a bus. Let's chuck some beers. It's when you go uh, hang out at the local high school like you do almost every day after work. Just uh, jump on one of those, man. There we go. I'm in. (laughs) All right, guys. uh, Got uh, just a couple more things before we wrap the show up today. It was great talking to Frank. Uh, We're going to talk about No Time to Die. It's the new James Bond flick, the very last one ever with Daniel Craig. Uh, The ratings and, and reviews have come out for it. It's looking solid. We'll talk about that. And then we'll wrap up the show with some Marshall's Music News. Uh, we got, uh, let's see, got uh, some news on the Chili Peppers, uh, you know, getting more records, making records, securing records. Uh, we'll also talk about the Scorpions and their 19th studio album. They have 19 and, albums? And we have the bestest of news. We'll kick off Marshall's Music News today about Mark Hoppus. Okay. Uh, yes, once again, I changed it on you. You're fine. Like I do every day. Uh, you should be used to it at this point. But, uh, yeah, we'll we'll start off the... Uh, uh, Marshall's Music News with uh, a Blink-182 story. Uh, Kenny goes, Rams all day, sadly being a freaking Seahawks fan. Yeah, Seahawks are oddly, Seahawks have the worst defense in the league. They're ranked 32nd out of 30 second. Two teams. That's, that's rough. <laughs> no, what's rough is having Matt Nagy as your coach. <laughs> mm, thanks, Chicago. Uh, once again, guys, we are off tomorrow, uh, taking a uh, personal day, but we'll be back on Monday. We'll have uh, shows Monday through Wednesday of next week. Uh, we'll be shifting some stuff around because uh, Cotter is going to be taking a little uh, vacay. So uh, we'll be off the uh, stream for ooh, like five days. Yeah, uh, a minute. Sorry, guys. But we'll be back um, with a couple shows uh, next week and the following. <laughs> we have like a week out of two weeks worth of shows. Yeah. Technically. We'll get there. Um, this is my last big vacation. I'll take time off around Christmas, and that'll be it. Yeah, I mean, how, how do you want to work Christmas? Do you want to do... Do we want to do our last show, like, on a Friday, and then do the thing we've been talking about with the uh, that tuxedo thing I was telling you about? Do you want to mm-hmm. end the year on that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too. Um, I mean, New- Christmas Eve is a Friday. Is it? Yeah, it depends on what how you want to take the time off. I don't know how many days I got left. I know I got a couple, but I think Christmas Eve is technically a day off now. Do they do that for us? Or is yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's Christmas, Christmas, Christmas Eve, then New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Okay. So yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. Uh, we got about a minute and a half. Minute and a half back at it. Just going to talk uh, quickly about uh, No Time to Die, the new James Bond flick. Uh, bum, 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 bum. And you saw we have that thing at 11, right? Yeah. Uh, Rhett says, all right, my quarterbacks for my fantasy team are Trevor Lawrence and Matt Ryan. Good. Who should I start? <laughs> Both are doing uh, not doing well so far. Trevor is projected to score more points, but the big guy said Falcons win. Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, who are the Jags playing, actually, is the, is the better question. Of course, I just deleted the lineup. Let me look real quick. Jags, Jags, Jags. Are Jags playing a late game?
Oh, wait, Jags play tonight, don't they? It's Jags Bengals tonight. Ooh, that's a great question. Yeah, Jags play Cincinnati tonight. Oh, uh, I kind of like, honestly, I like Matt Ryan. I I like Matt Ryan taking on Washington football team. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right, guys, be right back. The new James Bond movie, The Last with Daniel Craig, finally gets its release next Friday, October 8th. Initially set to come out November 2019. Yeah, and I think they had some like scheduling thing where yeah. another movie came onto their weekend. It's so like, oh, we'll push it off to, to April of 2020. And well, that didn't turn out for anyone really. So <laughs> it's finally making its way out. Currently, it's at 83%. On Rotten Tomatoes, uh, came down a little bit from last night where it was at 90. Yeah. But people seem to be liking the new movie. Yeah, everything I've seen so far, for the most part, I mean, you got uh, some tweets of people who saw it. No Time to Die is the perfect James Bond movie in the sense that Daniel Craig does a ton of James Bonding. Looking cool, kicking ass, traveling the world, drinking whiskey, dropping one-liners. Movie's main goal is sending off fans with one final epic James Bond hangout sesh. Yeah, another person who got to see it early said, No Time to Die is mostly nonsense. <laughs> Roger on. Roger Moore level absurd plot, but I love Roger Moore and was in the mood for a ridiculous plot. Craig is great. Uh, they also said it's the silliest and most serious Daniel Craig outing of James Bond uh, that they've seen. But uh, uh, people are saying it's really good. Yeah. I, IGN this morning gave it a 7 out of 10. Okay. I always look at them when it comes to movies. Uh, 83% on Rotten Tomatoes currently. Uh I love this movie. I don't love the runtime, Cotter. Did How you, long is it? It's two hours and 43 minutes long. It is Lord of the Rings long, but it is the last movie of the James Bond series with Daniel Craig. The yeah. last James Bond movie we'll probably get for another three or four years. I get it, but good Lord, what, <laughs> what a girthy film that is. Is this something you're going to watch in the big screen? Or are you going to wait till it comes out on uh, streaming? I feel like I have to go see in the theaters. I think uh, that James Bond movie, I should go see in the theaters. I get that. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense. All right, so there you go. James Bond, uh, the uh, new movie starring Daniel Craig, No Time to Die. Friday, October 8th, that is next week. It gets its release, finally. Coming up next, Marshall's Music News, Cotter and Marshall, Rock 106.1. There we go. Did that fix the light? I didn't even look. Oh, I didn't. Uh, no, because we're still on. Um, Because I've got to do that. Oh. Uh, so no. Stupid. But it's been, it might have been on the entire time. So maybe if I click it off, turn it back on. Because I think it was on when you did it. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so funny. So during the uh, break... Uh, a guy that uh, I play, I play uh, two in touch football with, uh, Michael O'Donovan, great guy. He said Raiders versus Chargers on Monday Night Football is by far the game of the week. Week, don't kid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, it's the game of the week, Mike. All right, all right. There's Jared's number. Oh, cool. Uh, no go on the on the biscuit. Um, what the what the f? Are they little? Did they tell you not yet? Uh, no, it just they they haven't. I don't know what record if they're on a record label at this point in time. Uh, but I reached out to a couple of people and nobody's gotten anything yet. Weird. Well, I can play it off a crappy online web player, probably. All right, guys, down to our last forty minutes. Well, hopefully it doesn't end like yesterday's show where our <laughs> radio station completely lost power and we didn't do our last two breaks of our show. Yeah, that was that was still just a whole weird thing. I, yeah. I've never, it's never happened. All right, guys, just a, once again, quick heads up. We're not on the stream uh, tomorrow, but Tuesday, it's back, baby. Torture Tuesday. We'll be uh, using the Fart Launcher 3000 uh, and using this baby for Torture Tuesday. You actually, you got the wheel. You want to put the wheel together? Is it easy? Uh yeah, I'll I'll put that together tomorrow. I'll have some some time. You trying to find things to do tomorrow? No, I got plenty to do, but uh, <laughs> I'll have time. Not having to do four hours of a show, 
hour at least of putting, uh, getting, laying out the show, and then another, you know, hour of finding topics for the show really frees up a day. Yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> really, really frees up a day. I will, yeah, I will say to do what we do, I would say, especially with the execution part of it, and then let's just say even the waking up part of it, like the time just before. And at least an extra half an hour of like grabbing audio yeah. and setting everything up. Easily six and a half, seven hours a day. Yeah, on, to do on every, focus on the show. To do this, yeah. And then we still have other jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I mean, I don't, after I send you the rundown, after that's finalized, I don't touch it again until the next morning. Yeah, I mean, the moment the moment you do that, I, I right. actually get it all done so I can sleep in the extra hour. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 I tend at night to do my other duties. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then when I get in the morning at four, I put together the show that usually takes at least, or lay out the notes and everything, usually takes at least an hour. Then audio, if there is some. So, I mean, it, some mornings it's an hour and a half. Yeah. So, yeah, it, then on top, yeah, shit, seven hours easily in, in, out of a day is just the show. And then it's like all the other crowd. Mm-hmm. And we're, I know, we're just not like we're being bitches now, guys. I apologize. There's a lot. Yeah, trust me, doing... We ain't slacking off. <laughs> no, no. The uh, the money they pay us, the fifteen hundred dollars a show, we definitely earn every single show. All right. Eminem, are you serious? So he had the uh, the grand opening of Mom's Spaghetti. Oh yeah, he was working the takeout window. <laughs> oh, was he? Yeah. That's awesome. So this is definitely. I feel like this is definitely the secret drop yeah. of Marshall Mathers LP uh, comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Well, so, if we were on the air tomorrow, we would be talking about the new Marshall Mathers LP. Uh, the Mom's Spaghetti restaurant opened on Wednesday. Familiar face man, the takeout window uh, with a sweater clean of vomit. The rapper worked the walk up window at the Alley Set Eatery. Um, M served the first 10 customers their takeout containers with spaghetti and meatballs. Vegan options available. <laughs> uh, snapping pictures with fans at the counter. Has he become more fan friendly over the years? Because this doesn't seem like something he would have done 20 years ago. I, probably, yeah, he's probably become more fan friendly. I mean, he's always had a sense of humor. He's, you know, he's always been quirky. But this just doesn't seem like, hey, I'm handing out spaghetti to my fans. Yeah, I I don't know. You have to like you have to market yourself in different ways now. So I mean, like, I think this is obviously just something special he did for, you know, the promotion of a new album that he hasn't officially talked about. Yeah. But you know, I yeah, I think uh, I think I mean I th- feel like a lot of guys growing from the angsty younger days to the older days, we all get a little bit nicer. There's some guys who just get meaner. But, you know, there's there's other ones who get nicer. Yeah. So I think he's just kind of gone that way. Uh, Rhett, we did not have the Limp Biscuit song. Uh, we, it is, it's currently out on the internet, but uh, it's not available to radio stations yet. So hopefully by the time we're back on the air Monday yeah, morning, we can, we can jam some Biscuit for you. Because the song, I mean, I've kind of heard it secondhand, like not the real traditional version of it. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I liked it. All right. We got four minutes. Um, yeah. Let's see. We can just go in reverse here. We'll do, uh, we'll do Mark Hoppus, Scorpions, and then the Chili Peppers. Then we'll wrap the show up. Uh, Charles said, ever since I've been up the protein and power green intake, I don't need a power blaster 3000. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> So uh, one day I uh, went to get a snack, uh, and at the store I went to, they had a protein cookie. Right. You ever ate a protein cookie mm. before? So me neither. But I was like, oh, protein cookie, healthy. Or I don't know. I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just try it, protein right. cookie. And it was just like a chocolate chip cookie. I guess it was a little, I mean, it wasn't like Chips Ahoy big. It was, it was quite big. It was like right. a, kind of a traditional, like, I don't know, what you get from a, a bakery or something. So I ate this cookie and I literally had like the worst gas of my life <laughs> afterwards. And it was like a huge, like massive protein cookie. So uh, Charles saying I up the protein. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, 
All right, about three and a half minutes. Uh, it's rage killing in the name of right now. Get into uh, Marshall's Music News. So we talked about uh, Run the Jewels earlier today. So Zach De La Roca, he hasn't done much. I mean, he hasn't done any yeah. Rage Against the Machine. But he's done a couple songs with Run the Jewels. Really? Yeah, he's done three songs with Run the Jewels. Uh, so I'm going to see them here. They play in Atlanta about a month away from today. Right. I kind of hope Zach De La Roca shows up. That would be cool. I mean, yeah, he is real. I mean, he what was it? Uh, what uh, Wake the Lion Internet? Uh, I know the Lion Lion something. He was in a band, uh, Wild International, I think was their song. It was like one record or just an EP or something. It wasn't anything drastic. But he's really just stayed out of everything, hasn't he? he hasn't uh, done, one day is a lion. One day is a lion. There we go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's just really kind of just stayed away, done yeah. his own thing. And good for him. The rest of the guys are like, let's join another band with Chris Cornell. It was a good move on their part. So Zach De La Roca, it was John Theodore, former drummer of the Mars Volta and current drummer of Queens of the Stone Age. It was just those two guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were active from 2008 to 2011. Yeah, it was very quick. And they had, they had Wild International, I think, was their one hit. So the one cool thing about that song, Wild International, was... Uh, that song never had a radio edit, and my production guy at the time for X1075, he actually offered the record label to send a edit of that because it had some cuss words and stuff in yeah. it. Uh, he did it, and they actually served that out oh, as, cool. the, as the version that was served to radio stations. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I don't get sometimes, here's the song, guys. Oh, by the way, you really can't play it. It's got a bunch of cuss words in it. Yeah. Yeah, they sent him, uh, like, they paid him nothing. They just sent him some yeah. One Day as a Lion gear. Like, they sent him some albums, the vinyl, and, like, a T-shirt and a hat. And they're like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like, a record producer would charge, like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Charles, Charles chimed in with Roach Poop, and then he said, not for the stream, supposed to be a text message. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Hey, it happens. All right, guys, once again, wrapping up the show today with Marshall's Music News. Thank you for everyone who's uh, swung in or out of the live stream today. We do appreciate it. Back Monday morning, coming in hot. (laughs) Oh, I have an idea I wanted to share with you um, off the air. Okay. Uh, Cool. Got about uh, 35 seconds. I found my Anchorman in a pocket thing that I found when Anchorman came out 20 years ago. (laughs) All right, guys, we'll be right back. Let's get into it. Story number one, Marshall's Music News. Let's kick off Marshall's Music News today with the best news we could possibly get. Blink-182's Mark Hoppus has updated fans on his recent cancer ba- cancer battle, and he has written the words, cancer-free. Yeah! Great news. So here's the whole message he put out just yesterday via his Instagram page. He goes, just saw my oncologist, and I'm cancer-free. Thank God and universe, and friends, and family, and everyone who sent support and kindness and love. Still have to get scanned every six months, and it'll take me until the end of the year to get back to normal life, but today is an amazing day, and I feel so blessed. Can I get a W in the chat? So drop the Ws, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Super exciting news. Obviously, uh, Mark Hoppus was diagnosed back last June with uh, stage 4A diffuse large B cell lymphoma, a uh, horrible, horrible thing, but he completed his uh, cancer treatments, and he is currently cancer-free. All right, let's do some Blink-182. It's The Rock Show. Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1061. Love the positive vibes of that story. We're going to keep that positive vibe momentum going all through Marshall's Music News, actually. Cool. Up next, we're going to talk about a story about the Scorpions. They're going to rock you like a hurricane.
Speaking of hurricanes, I don't mean to jinx us. Nothing's even come close. No, no, not at all. It's really weird. My wife has got really wrapped up into following everything, and it's just like, oh, there's another one. I'm like, we're fine. It's just not going to oh, There's another one. I'm there's, like, a, there's like a big hurricane, but it's like a million miles off the coast right now. We, It's like we work in radio, so you know we got to be prepared. If something does come, You know, we'll do a bunch of coverage like we've done in the past. And it's like, I'm not even sweating this stuff mm. until I can look at it and go, Okay, there's there's a chance. So really, I mean, we're we're like there's like one month where there could possibly be another one, right? And then it's over. Yeah, hurricane season usually well, it goes into November. Yeah, it goes into November. Does yeah. it go into November? Yeah. All right. Because I want to say, I thought we I thought it was just like a June through September. Let's see. Or sorry, June through October type of deal. Because we got it can still happen. Hurricane Michael happened in September. Uh, it's through November. It's uh, May twenty second through November thirtieth. November 30th, really? Yeah. I want it. Didn't Hurricane, the, the, was it Michael? Which was Ida? the one that, no, what was the one Iris. a few years ago that we actually had to, where we actually went wall to wall and cover, had the coverage? I yeah, Michael. Say, Michael was the bad one. And that was November, wasn't it? I don't remember. I thought Michael was October. It might have been. I don't remember. But uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, we're almost, we're almost out of this hurricane season when we had nothing this year. And that's the best news. I think the most rain we got was for like from, it wasn't even from a hurricane. It just got real rainy for like two and a half days here. That yeah. was two weeks back. That was it. And because of that rain, they had to cancel Bonnaroo and, <laughs> and the Rebel Rock Festival down in Orlando. Whoops. All right, guys, be right back. Story number two, it's Marshall's Music News. All right, German hard rock legends, the Scorpions, will release their, wait for it, 19th studio album, Rock Believer, on February 11th of next year. This might be like the sneakiest discography ever from a band. I had no idea. 19 records. If I, if you, if you would ask, hey, Marshall, how many Scorpion albums are there? I'd be like, I don't know, eight, <laughs> right. 19. That's crazy. They're on like Iron Maiden level of, <laughs> of level of, of album releases now. Now their first single off that album is going to be called Peacemaker. And uh, obviously uh, that is going to be coming out here in, sorry, I had it written down. There it is, October 21st. So we'll be getting new Scorpion stuff coming up here in the next few weeks. Now the album was written and recorded in the Scorpion's DNA with core uh, compositions, according to their singer, Klaus. Uh, he said, we recorded the album as a band live in one room like we did in the 80s. So uh, the band back together. Now they're going to be doing a residency in Vegas to kick off the Rock Believer Tour next March. Okay. And they're going overseas for a bunch of tour dates uh, with uh, Wolfgang Van Halen's band Mammoth WVH. Interesting. All right, coming up next, one more story. We'll wrap up the show. It's Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1 is 6 1. All right, last story we'll talk about is the uh, Chili Peppers. They've been uh, awarded new uh, plaques for albums and songs. They have so many, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. Awarded uh, new single certifications and uh, song certifications. We'll just go over them. It's ridiculous. And that's the show. So we're talking to our consultants today at 11. Yeah. I got to set up uh, our staff for a couple of events that we have going on this weekend. Jake Thompson is going to be uh, broadcasting live for Hot 98.3. Because when you think of Jake Thompson, you think of the Hot 98.3. Mm -hmm. He's going to be out broadcasting from 3 to 5 at the grand opening of this like massive new liquor store in Pooler. Um, hold on, get the name of it real quick. It's called Pooler Spirits Warehouse. Oh, it's a place I've driven past a crap ton of going, when is that opening? Yeah, it's so it's open officially today. Okay. It is 9,000 square feet. It's massive. Of liquor, wine, beer, and cigars. There's 12 coolers alone dedicated to craft beer. The ribbon cuttings today at 4.30. There's free food, giveaways, free tastings. 
Um, and uh, they want to pull everyone from Bloomingdale, apparently, out to this because Bloomingdale is a dry city. I had no idea. I had no idea either. Interesting. So if you are in the Bloomingdale or Pooler area and you want to go get some awesome craft beer or liquor or wine or cigars, uh, the Pooler Spirits Warehouse at 1032 U.S. Highway 80 is the place to be today. Jake Thompson is going to be out there broadcasting live from 3 to 5. Uh, so I'm putting out uh, some stuff. Some stuff for him today. Getting ready for that. I might swing out. I got a, my dog will be at doggy daycare. I can head out there, pick up some beer, pick up my dog, head home. Uh, Dan says, I'm back in alive. Just got cussed up by my boss, left my ass off for the brakes, but it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that sucks. Yeah, Dan said that uh, his brakes went out on the way to work or at work when he got in this morning. That sucks. Oh, man. You're 21. That job probably doesn't matter too much. Also, don't ask us for a job. We don't have one to give you. So you going to Hamilton this weekend? Yep. What else you got going on this weekend? Anything? Um, uh, it's uh, Sunday is uh, my son's birthday. Twenty-one years old. We'll be uh, zooming. With him on his birthday? What'd you, what'd you get him? Did you wind up getting him a, a gift card to a liquor store or uh, whatever? No, we ended up, uh, he had a list of stuff. So it was, uh, we just literally got him what was on the list. Nice. Send it out to him. So there you go. So I give my uh, my wife a list of stuff that I want. Yeah. Um, well, t- technically I like tell her and then she gets mad when I buy it before she could buy it. But uh, I gave her a list this year and I haven't touched it. So I want to see how well my wife does. When I actually gave her a, just a list of things, and then I gave her a price value of what she can expect to pay for each one of those items. Okay, so all like, the work for. Yeah, so I gave her like so I got there's a video game called Returnal that's out on the PlayStation Five, right? Uh, so that came out in April, it was sixty bucks, and I was like, by the time I, I go, I want it for Christmas, and I go, by the time Black Friday hits, it should be thirty. Do not pay more than thirty. So I did that for like the whole long laundry list of okay. stuff that I I wanted. All right. So we'll see. We'll see how she does. Uh, let's see. Dan says, no, it's a plumbing company, so it really, it really don't. I'm still trying to find my way into a good career. There you go. It takes some time, man. I, uh, Cotter and I, I think we just both fell into our careers because we were young and just liked the radio at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was what I wanted to do, I think, for a long time, and I definitely knew in high school. Yeah, I knew I, I knew I wasn't excited about going to college, truth be told. And uh, I, although I did, we obviously did, and we both failed out of community college or quit. Uh, no, no, no. We quit. We didn't fail out. We just dropped out. Yeah, we dropped out. Uh, so, yeah, and then we both just showed up at a radio station one day and we're like, we'll work for free. Yeah. And then 20 years later, we're still working in radio. Uh, yeah, you could do it back in the day and go work for free. You really can't do that now. Yeah, we, we both start off in, as interns, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I was, so I started off, I was promotions intern, uh, set up remotes and events, Mm -hmm. and then I became the morning show stunt boy, which they never paid me for. Yep. So I was was getting into the morning show at 5.30 every day, was there until 9 or 10, then went to school, but never getting paid. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere during that time, I started doing weekend overnights, and they paid me for that. I did get paid for that. But I was doing weekend overnights and still doing mornings, the morning show snubboy stuff, mm-hmm. which they still never pay me for. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I lucked out. Because then they got rid of the morning show, which I was still a part of. And I was like, oh, crap. Are they, am I, you know, my you? Yeah. But now like, I was still doing the weekend overnights. So, right. yeah, I, um, I start off as a promotions intern for a month or two or three. Then they immediately promoted me to morning show stunt boy. And then the, when the morning show left, uh, they hired me full time to be middays on the Rock Channel, and then afternoons on the Top Forty Channel <laughs> or uh, like Adult Alternative yeah, Channel. Yeah, yeah. And I did that for a while. I was a pseudo music director for a minute, and then I bounced to Springfield, Illinois. Then I bounced to Vegas for seven years, and I've been here for seven years. And I've yeah. kind of done a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. I did a every. I did a little bit of everything in Illinois. But yeah, it's like it was when you, you know, before automation, you know, before, right, we got a computer, <laughs> runs everything. So, yeah, it had always had to have somebody in the building. So that's why I did weekend overnights for like three years. Yeah. Jesus. Friday, Friday, I guess technically Saturday, Sunday, Monday, midnight to six. 
Yeah, I did uh I did overnights on X1075 in Vegas for about six months and then I wound up getting picked up full time as the full time remote tech okay. for X1075 because the one the remote tech at that time got a DUI. <laughs> and they're okay. like, Well, can't do that anymore. Marshall, you're in. Yep. <laughs> I'm in. Uh so yeah, that's kind of what happened. Ooh, Dan's getting career advice for people. Uh Rhett says, Dan, become a cop. There you go. You can work with Rhett. He's taking a bukkake shot of pepper spray in the mouth. <laughs> uh, Liquid says, sell some timeshare. Awesome money, and you uh, only have to lose a little bit of your soul each day. <laughs> that, <laughs> you're really selling them there, Liquid. <laughs> I don't know. If I could go back and uh, do anything, that's a great question. I'd go back and do a career with more money, that's for sure. Uh Outside of my fifteen hundred dollars a day, which I currently earn, mm-hmm. I, which once again we earn, we talk about that all the time. That's true, we uh, deserve it. Um, I don't know if I would do anything else. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it. I if always. But if you had to, if I had to, I mean, the only other thing that I thought about doing at one point in time was teaching. Mm-hmm. But that would have taken a lot more school. Yeah, I don't want to be a teacher. They don't make shit. <laughs> I know this because I know your wife. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and my buddy Bob. Uh, hmm. yeah, I think at this point I, I actually would, I love, I love the house selling process. I actually wouldn't mind like doing some realty stuff. Right. But also I wouldn't, like, I love this skill of like, uh, like what Charles does on the chat. Um, he owns EBI here locally, he started his own business, like learning how to, uh, like build things. I guess I've, I've, I've always been super interested in being handy, but I'm not exactly handy. Right. <laughs> is the best way to explain it. Yeah, I get that. I, I love that. I love that. And what Charles does, I always think is super cool. He builds docks to houses to doing all this stuff himself. I think I think that's super interesting. I I always like the idea of doing more of a, a manual based job. <laughs> he goes, Don't do plumbing. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, be right back. All right, before we get out of here, one more time, let's check in with Marshall and Marshall's Music News. Once again, keeping the positive vibes rolling on Marshall's Music News, the Chili Peppers have earned themselves... 18 new certifications on their previous works. Three were for albums, Californication, Stadium Arcadium, and The Getaway, while the remainder were for a mix of singles spanning decades in the band's career. Now, I mean, Under the Bridge, the the, the breakout album for them, yeah. six times platinum. That means six million albums sold. Californication's up to five million. Same thing with Danny California. Uh, let's see. or that's, Those are songs. I apologize. Uh, I mean, they, they've just got Californication seven times platinum now. I mean, even a small song like "The Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie" is now one times platinum. Are you so, serious? Like, yeah, Damn. I mean, okay. And they have they have gold records for "Around the World," "Breaking the Breaking the Girl," "Suck My Kiss," the Zephyr song. I mean, these guys have been loaded and very successful their entire careers, but they've just been updated with these new certifications. So, congrats to the Chili Peppers. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out on air and on the stream. We're actually out tomorrow. Back. On Monday. So we'll talk to you then, 6 o'clock. Cotter and Marshall, Rock 1061. Uh, Charles, I'll get back to you on buying your company for $2 million. <laughs> I'll see what uh, my wife says. <laughs> all right, guys, like Cotter said, we are out tomorrow. Uh, we don't apologize uh, at all. It's going to be great. We're going to sleep in. I'm going to Chicago. Cotter's going to touch himself and go see Hamilton in that order, or maybe not. Same time. Yeah, probably same time. Uh, we'll be back on Monday morning, 6 a.m. Uh, with all sorts of goodness. We'll do a special beer for breakfast next week. Uh, what else are we doing? We're we're only doing shows Monday through Wednesday next week. Torture Tuesday. Uh, Lauren Wolverton's going to be in studio with us on Wednesday. Uh, we also got Mac. Mac is back, baby. Mac is back with Chicks on Dudes on Tuesday. So it'll be a fun-filled show next week. Plural shows. We'll see you then.